ABC Sports and the Olympics, a long-standing partnership. Again, at the Winter Games of Calgary, the Olympic tradition continues. ABC Sports presents... College Football. Today, Earl Bruce coaches his final game for Ohio State following his controversial firing this week. In last year's meeting with Michigan, the Buckeyes All-American linebacker Chris Fieldman registered a school record 29 tackles. But he couldn't stop Jamie Morris, who gained 210 yards, a record for this colorful series. One of football's most intense rivalries, Ohio State and Michigan. For the 79th consecutive time, we have a crowd of over 100,000 in Michigan Stadium for the 84th meeting between two of these outstanding rivals. One of the most colorful season ending rivalries that began back in 1897. But for the first time since 1985, it will not decide the Big Ten representative in the Rose Bowl. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender, along with Lynn Swan. And Lynn, even though they're not going to the Rose Bowl, don't tell the players and coaches and fans this is a meaningless game. I'm interested, though. How will the firing of Earl Bruce affect Ohio State? We're really not going to know until that team takes the field and plays, but it can affect them in one of two ways. Number one, they could be down and depressed because Earl Bruce is gone and play that way. Number two, they could be very upset about it and want to show the university they made a bad choice and play a great football game and win it. On the other side, Michigan would like to win today. That would give Bo his 18th season with eight or more wins. Going to a bowl game, it's important to win this final game, going to that bowl with a good attitude. Now, they're going to have some problems here. But they're going to have to rely on their offense to compensate for the problems. The offense is going to rely on Jamie Morris to run the football. Their defense has been hurt all year. Their secondary has had problems. Their injuries there will get into during the ball game. The linebacking core is decimated by injuries during the spring training, summer training, and during the season. The offense is going to have to possess the football, control it, march it down the field to keep that injury real defense off the field. Michigan has won the last two. They've been explosive games the last two years. We'll be back to set the starting lineups and our opening kickoff from Ann Arbor, Michigan. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Honda, who invites you to experience the all-new CRX SI at your local Honda dealer. By U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. By Cigna, a leader in insurance, health care, employee benefits, and financial services. And by Tandy Computers, there is no better value. Welcome back to Ann Arbor, Michigan, everyone. I'm Steve Alvarez down along the sidelines. Uh, Bo Schembechler, the head coach from Michigan, did something different today. He introduced all the seniors on his squad before, the, before they tossed the coin. That's something they'd never done before. Maybe it's the start of a new tradition. Last night down in Columbus, Ohio, the continuation of a long-standing tradition. It is the senior tackle. Last night, All-American linebacker Chris Spielman, one of 15 seniors who hit the tackling dummy in a tradition that dates back to 1913. But there was one other person who had to hit that tackling dummy, head coach Earl Bruce, joining his seniors because this, too, is his last game. Not too bad for a former running back with his seniors at the senior tackle. I should tell you, right before the coin toss, all the players came out on the field. They all had Earl headbands on. So you know they are thinking about their head coach as they get set to start this football game. Let's go back up to Gary and Lynch. Steve, thank you very much. Keep warm. It's a frosty day here. As we approach Thanksgiving time, Michigan has won the toss. They have deferred, and Ohio State will be receiving. And Ohio State coming out, as mentioned, in those headbands with the red foot gear. And Michigan who would like to give Bo Schembechler his eighth win, giving him 18 seasons with eight or more victories. Rick Sukowitz will be kicking off for the Michigan Wolverines. They've won the last two. They've been explosive football games. Decided in the last moments of play. 
and everybody waiting to see how the Buckeyes will respond after a very distracting week. Going back deep now will be Snow, number 25. He's the exciting freshman, Carlos Snow, and Vince Workman, number 42, alongside him. And Sukowitz, barefooted and all. What a tough day to be barefooted. It sure is. Teams have tried to kick away from Vince Workman because he's such an outstanding returner. But adding Carlos Snow back there means one of two very talented running backs will get the ball. Sukowitz is ready now. The 84th meeting between these two schools. Not hit exceptionally well, and it's going to be taken by Workman. He'll bring it up to the 20, out to the 25 to the 27-yard line. And the Buckeyes will set it up there. Ohio State has lost three in a row. This is their worst record in 21 years. If they lose today and lose four in a row, that'd be the first time since 1943 that has happened. Boy, Workman almost took a chance here. The ball gets very close to the sideline. He makes a good grab, brings it back in. Running backs get in that situation. In a ball game like this, everybody wants to make something happen, so he took that chance. That may be indicative of how aggressive this football team's going to be today. From the 26, in motion number 42 is Workman. Tom Tupa is the quarterback, and he's going to throw on first down. Pressure coming from Messner, and he gets it off. The pass is complete to Alex Higdon, who did not play last week because of a lacerated hand. And in fact, Earl Bruce wasn't sure he'd play today. And he's an important factor in this ball game. He's the second leading receiver on that team. Here's the offensive line. Their best guy is the center, Jeff Ulenhake. Last year, an all Big Ten performer at the guard spot. Stays the act, an all academic performer. Tupa has Snow, the freshman, Cooper, the senior, Workman, and Ross, who's come on very well in the last few weeks. Second down, two yards to go. Double tight end alignment, Hignan, and now Jeff Ellis, the freshman, in at tight end. Snow trying to get the first down, and he'll get nothing. That was Messner, number 60, who just had a sensational year for Michigan, along with Ward Manuel. And that's something we expected a lot today, Lynn, is they'd use four down linemen. They still list three down linemen on the depth chart, but what has been happening for the Michigan defense with the linebackers being hurt, they've gone the four down linemen for the last few ball games to give that defense a better chance. They've got some talent on that front line, too. Third down, still two yards to go for the Buckeyes. Everett Ross split out. Check that. Now Ross goes flanked out to the top of the screen, and Workman comes to the near side. Single back alignment behind Tupa. Third and two. Gives to Cooper, and Cooper, trying to lunge forward, will not get the first down. When we covered Ohio State against Michigan State, the first play of the game was a play-action pass. Big touchdown, big play. And then that offense tightened up. Similar situation here. Although the play didn't go for a touchdown, they had substantial yardage. But on second and third down, they once again came to the short running game didn't keep that offense opened up, and they didn't get the first down. Billy Harris, the nose guard, led the charge defensively. You're looking at the leading punter of the nation, Tom Tupa, 47.6, and John Colazar, who's been out the last two weeks with mononucleosis, back to field the punt. Not exceptionally well hit. Colazar will field it, and he'll be dropped at the 26-yard line. That time the ball not hit well at all. Bo Schembechler had a reaction to Earl Bruce's firing, and here it is. It's hard to say. Uh, almost every year um, we lose one of our top coaches to being fired for um, seemingly no reason at all. The end result, Gary, is it's like everything else. Month passes, a new coach comes in, and they forget all about the fact that one had been fired. Um, that's just the nature of the beast, and uh, unfortunately, uh, it's one of the problems that we have uh, in big-time intercollegiate athletics. From the 26, Michigan with the ball, here's Jamie Morris, who needs 130 yards today to set a single-season rushing record for Michigan. He picks up yardage out to the 32. Derek Eisenman making the stop with Chris Fieldman. There's the offensive line. It's been hurt most of the year, but John Elliott has been steady. All 306 pounds of him. He is a Lombardi finalist. Back deep, they have Brown, of course, at quarterback, Morris, McMurtry, and Callaway. We expect to see Colazar play some at that flanker spot. And at the fullback now is Jared Bunch instead of Leroy Ford. Both of them have been alternating there all year long. Second down now, five yards to go. Callaway in motion. 
Jamie Morris again. He's got the first down and then some out across the 45. Jamie Morris coming in here with 1,339 yards rushing, averaging 5-7 a carry, picks up the first down out to the 46. He's going to get tremendous blocking up here. Number 80, Jeff Brown, the tight end, gets a great block, sealing down, and Dirk Walker comes out and also gets a great block. So Jamie Morris had one of the great games of all time against Ohio State last year, over 200 yards, and he's going to have to be a catalyst this afternoon. 210 yards to be exact. That was a 13-yard pickup just across the 45. Trip Welber, number three, now in at flanker, goes in motion. Straight ahead comes Bunch, the big freshman out of Ashtabula, Ohio. He picks up five to the 50. Defensively, Mike Solomon is having his best year at that nose guard spot. Solomon has come back from a severe knee problem to play very steady. But the guy to watch is Spielman. Also, Camaro, who last year was the Big Ten defensive lineman of the year. They've had to make some changes back deep. Zach Dumas replacing the injured Greg Rogan, who's out with a broken leg. And William White, he's been sensational. Five interceptions this year. Second down, five yards to go for the Wolverines. No score, just underway in the first quarter. Brown off the Morris again. It closes down, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Good reaction that time by Ohio State. It was Eisenman again. Now, Eisenman number 10 is a change for Earl Bruce. Eisenman has been playing outside linebacker. They moved him in to play inside, trying to strengthen the interior of that defense. He was just right there on the left side of the screen. He's going to play inside. He's 6'3", 215. He's not real strong to be an in big to be an inside linebacker. So in order to compensate, he's got to play very aggressively and fill those holes quickly. Well, do you know he boxed Mike Tyson one time, lost a decision to him, and the Golden Gloves decided to play football. Well, I would, too. He was the only one who lost by a decision. Everybody else got knocked out. Here's a pass to Bunch. Bunch has a first down, still on his feet to the 30, 20, 15, and knocked down. Jared Bunch has a first and goal for Michigan. 39 yards on the play. Jared Bunch doing his job as a pass receiver on this particular play. Nothing fancy by the here. Doesn't go deep. Very controlled. Gets you the outside. He just does a good job. He's not looking here to make great moves. He's just running straight ahead. And they're right there. Great block by number 40, Colazar, as he blocks on William White, number 37. That's a big, big play. That was on a third and five. They pick up 39 yards. Jamie Morris to the near side. He's got the corner to the five. He's out at the one. Bill Webb, the lead block on that particular play. Morris just denied the touchdown. And not denied by much. As you see, watch number 46, Bill Webb, gets a great block right there. He crushed that whole pursuit on the inside. The rest is left up to Jamie Morris. Now, you don't, he doesn't pick up a lot of yards, but this is a tremendous run to get to the outside. 11-yard run, in fact, There's just Chris, inside the one. Does Chris Billman take a look at his pursuit on that play? showing his speed to get to the outside to deny him the touchdown. Michigan trying to take the lead. Morris, touchdown. touchdown rushing this year six to nothing with 10 02 to go in this first quarter that drive starting from the 26 yard line of Michigan Mike Gillette point after right down the middle and the Wolverines in this 84th meeting jump on top seven to nothing Amy Morris he's done it all he gets great blocking up front this entire drive is nothing fancy, but great Michigan football driving down the field. 10 2 in the first period. 
Gary Bender, Lynn Swan, and Steve Alvarez from Michigan Stadium. And Lynn, that was nothing fancy on that drive. They just took the ball right at Ohio State. And when they talk about Big Ten football, typical Michigan football, that was a perfect example of it. Like you said, no play designed to be a big play, but Jared Bunch breaks one for a big play. Jamie Morris carries the ball five times in that drive, giving them the consistency. They score a touchdown in their first possession. Looks like he needs some repair there on his jersey. <laughs> I remember the days when they used to have those tearaway jerseys. Guys would be coming on the field, they look like scarecrows. They're just hanging rags, just hanging on their backs. There's the drive. Seven plays, a big play, the 39-yard pass from Brown to Bunch, and then, of course, Morris taking it in. So we start all over again as Snow and Workman go back. Sugowitz to kick off. This time he hits it very well. Workman will take it from the one. Out to the 20, 25, and that's just about where they were when they started this football game. So Tom Tupa and the Buckeyes will come back in and try to get something going offensively. Number 76, Michael Dames is the guard on this play, and he just opens up a tremendous hole. You see him pull right there. He comes across. Great block right here, just spearheaded into the end zone. Dames, a junior out of the Miami area. All but Elliott returns in an offensive line for Bo Schembechler next year. From the 25, Tupa, who's played very well the last two weeks, despite the losing games for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Two receivers split to the top of the screen. On first down, two foot of throw. And he's on target, close to the first down. That's Workman trying to dive to the front part of that stick. Looks like he's just short of it. It'll bring up a second down, a yard to go. Bobby Abrams, the linebacker, made the tackle. Ohio State has good personnel in their backfield. Carlos Snow can be a tremendous back. They've got excellent receivers in Ross and Workman, and now with Alex Higdon playing, they've got a good group of people. They've got to play more of a wide-open offense to have any kind of chance of staying with Michigan in this ballgame. Last two games, as I mentioned, Tupa playing so well, he's thrown three touchdowns. He's back, gives it off this time, and that running game just not going. That's Workman, who's still the leading rusher on this team, even though he's been moved to the flanker spot. Absolutely. He came into this, into this ballgame with... 22 carries. For, excuse me, that's um, 116 carries for 496 yards. The last year he was a 1,000 yard rusher as a sophomore, 1,030 yards. They moved him in the Purdue game to the flanker spot. As Earl Bruce put it, he wanted to get his 11 best football players on the field, bringing Snow in. And here is Snow. Snow on third down, trying to get that yard, and it's going to be very close. John, John Milligan, Milligan, number 30, did number, a good job. Number 30 is playing in linebacker position, just came from inside out to make a great stop, and looks like it was behind the line of scrimmage, but I think we'll have a measurement. I don't think they made it from where we look at it. So that would be twice now. They've been able to throw on first down, get some good yardage, and then unable to pick up the additional yardage. Teams talk about mixing up their plays, running when you're thinking pass, passing when you're thinking run. I think everybody knows that Ohio State is going to try and run play action passes on first down. So they're anticipating it. Where they make their mistake, I think, in offensive strategy at this point is still trying to run the ball straight up the middle on second and third down. They really have to open up that defense. Well, they're going to go for it. It's going to be fourth down. They just missed it. And Earl Bruce, his last time as coach of Ohio State, probably figures now we've got to make our move, get something going. It's early, 9.03 to go in the first quarter. Field position just inside their own 35, and here we go on fourth down. If this offense is going to play an emotional game for Earl Bruce, this is going to be their first opportunity to prove it. I guess when you're a lame duck, you can start gambling a little bit. And now Tupa being sure everything's aligned properly. Here we go, fourth down, less than a yard. Tupa sneaking, and again, it's not easy. We're going to have to wait and see. Tupa's big. He's 6'5", 222 pounds. But there wasn't a lot of movement up front, but they did get the first down. He ran behind their center, Jeff Ulenick, who's 6'4", 256 pounds. All he has to do is snap it and fire out. You see just a little gap right there to, to the right of the center. Both linebackers from Michigan tried to fill it very quickly. That was John Milligan and Neil Simpson, but they didn't get there in time to stop Tupa. They've carried the ball five times, netted two yards. That's how tough it's been thus far to run against Michigan. Feel the airwaves. First down just across the 35. Maybe that's a beginning point now for this Ohio State team, trailing 7 to nothing. In motion goes Higdon. Pitch comes back to Cooper, the fullback, and there's just nothing going 
the Michigan defense swarming all over. As we mentioned, they lead the Big Ten in that rushing defense. They're outstanding along with Michigan State. It's just been hard to run against these two clubs from the state of Michigan. Very, very difficult. When you look at the Michigan defense, you see right there the people up front. Messner, as you said, having a tremendous year. The linebacking core decimated by injuries, but they've done a good job filling in Milligan, Grant, Willingham. Willingham, a, a very strong player. But their secondary is where a story has to be told. In their secondary, Doug Mallory, their safety, leads this team in tackles. Second is Alan Bishop. And Alan, Alan Bishop on the last play did a great job coming in, taking on the interference. And that shows, again, the problems they've had at linebacker. That's the reason those guys are making so many tackles. Second down, 10, two but a throw. Protection is excellent. Now he scrambles out. Ward Manuel giving chase, gets it off to Cooper, the fullback. He's still going to be six yards short of the first down. Let's go down now to Steve Alvarez. Thank, thank you, Gary. You can see the thermometer it says about 32 degrees. Believe me, it feels much colder than that down here. The players trying to stay warm. They have some space heaters, but you have to be careful. Look at what happened to one of the assistant coaches. He got too close to the butane heater and burned his pants. Luckily, it didn't burn his legs, so it's awful dangerous here on the sidelines as well. Gary? Well, you ought to get combat pay down there, shouldn't you? I, to tell you the truth, I already burned one of my gloves <laughs> trying to stay warm. So <laughs> next, I'm going to set my shoes on fire. It's the only way to keep your toes warm. Okay. I was saying, I was saying, if it's not snowing, it is not bad weather. Third down six now for Ohio State. Tupa having a little trouble getting out from under center. In trouble, scrambling out, trying to get the first down, and he's going to get it. Tupa not known for his mobility, did a pretty good job that time. His spinning move was the difference. He got the first down, and J.J. Grant, coming off of a strong game a week ago, made the tackle. Well, that's the kind of performance they're going to have to get from Tupa and from a couple of other players to stay in this ball game. Here he gets pretty good protection. He steps up in the pocket wisely. Number 56 is Billy Harris, a nose guard, coming through for the pressure. Then he just takes off and knows where that first down marker is to pick it up. Eight-yard pickup, first down. Line of scrimmage now, the 48 of Ohio State. Workman number 42 in motion. Tupa giving to Snow. Is he quick? Across the 50 to the 49 of Michigan. Snow out of the Cincinnati area. Had a career-high 96 yards in the game last week. Losing to Iowa in the last seconds. He's only 5'9", 194, but he has the potential on any play, Lynn, to bust it all away. And they'll try and give him more plays like that last one, misdirection plays, where the offensive line goes out to the right, one blocker stays in for the cutoff block, and he sneaks back to the other side. He can break one of those for a big one. Gain of four, second down six. Cooper and Snow in the backfield. Now check that. James Bryant has checked in. This is Snow. Snow to the 40s, got the first down and then some. Inside the 35 of Michigan to the 34, Doug Mallory over there. There is a penalty flag back at the 48-yard line. Joe Stasniak, number 79, 6'5", 280 pounds, is going to be out there blocking. Right there, you see him on the end, 79. And out in front, number 11, Bill Matlock, leading the way for Snow. I think they're going to call Stasniak for the hold. The penalty against Ohio State, that'll wipe out a 15-yard run. Jim Kimmerling, the official today. On the offense, still second down. So that will negate their biggest gain rushing of the day, and Earl Bruce checking to see how they can solve that problem. Oh. Line of scrimmage now will be the 43. Cooper comes back in at fullback. Second down now, 16 yards to go. Workman again goes in motion. Tupa, pressure coming, and guess who that is? Mark Messner, who came into this game with 17 tackles for loss, which leads the Big Ten and also has eight sacks to go along with it. He has been playing tremendous football all year. See right there, he takes on number 44, George Cooper, plays off the block, comes in and gets Tom Tupa. In order to do that, downfield, you've got to have pretty good pass coverage. They're keeping the receivers in check. He has just been almost unblockable. There he is out of Heartland, Michigan. I asked some of his teammates, what would you say about Messner? He says, he'll knock your head off. <laughs> He's a tough one. Father played for the Detroit Lions and for the Pittsburgh Steelers from 1960 to 1965. Tupa now in real difficulty, third and 24. Pressure coming again. He'll get some of it back. Snow in the open field. Snow, look at him skip through. Looked like no running room at all. 
gets it out to the 45, still about 12 yards short of the first down. And Brent White, number 88, coming back from that severe knee problem, made the tackle for the Wolverines. And so Tupa will go from quarterback to punter. He feels that he's been a better punter this year, taking every snap at quarterback. Well, he stays warm, doesn't have to worry about warming up his leg, although his forced punt was not very good. Keep in mind, he's led the nation, he's leading the nation on 57 punts to have that 46.7 average. First punt, as you can see, was not up to his standards. Colazar going back now to receive the punt. 419 to go in the first quarter. He hits this one off to the far side. That ball will bounce and head towards the out of bounds area about the 28 yard line. That's where Michigan will have it for the second time. The last time they marked 73 yards to score. That was only a 36 yard punt. It's cold and that can affect the punters. Earl Bruce trails by seven. Ohio State has not lost four games in a row since 1943 when they lost to Great Lakes, Purdue of Cleveland, Northwestern, and Indiana. I didn't know Wolverines needed glasses. <laughs> I didn't either. I wonder if John Vitale, the center for the Wolverines, has that hat in his famous collection. He's quite a guy. John Vitale wanted me to mention he's the center for Michigan. He said to tell all his friends in Detroit he's sorry he couldn't get tickets for all of them, but his intent and purpose was right. So Vitale, with all his friends wanting to come to this game, but it's been sold out for a long time. Brown back to throw on first down screen. Set up to Jamie Morris. 35. Morris, and he's able to pick up the first down. Just typical Jamie Morris. It looks like he stopped and he gets two, three additional yards. Vitale that time threw a big block on Chris Spielman, and that might have been the difference as to whether or not they got the first down. They run this simple screen play. Jamie Morris gets out there. He meets contact initially at the 35-yard line. Then he just keeps driving, and you see the ball placed just beyond the 40. So with contact, and we'll see Spielman coming up as a part of that, getting blocked out a little bit there. Jamie Morris is still able to pick up another five yards. Remember Spielman in this game last year had a school record 29 tackles. That time Vitale kept him back long enough. First down, give to Morris again. Morris always looking for that alley, that cutback. Picks up four, almost five yards to the 45, and Derek Eisenman again making the stop. If you look at Jamie Morris, you just are amazed at his durability. He's breaking almost virtually ever rushing record at Michigan. All he needs is 130 yards to become Michigan's single season rushing record holder. Rob Lytle holds it. He has 1,469 yards. That's the only thing left to break. He's broken everything else. Yeah. What a year. Third straight year over 1,000 yards. Back to throw on second and five. There's Brown. He's in trouble. That's Zach Dumas, number 21, the cornerback. He's the guy to replace the injured Greg Rogan out of Deptford, New Jersey. Big, strong cornerback. A loss back to the 35 and shaking up his brow. Zach Dumas plays the short side of the field. He just comes in on the blitz. You see he catches Brown completely off guard and snaps his head back. And Brown is down. We're going to go away for a moment. We'll check the status of the sophomore quarterback. Michigan has it at their 35. Here's a play that just knocked Brown out of the ball game. The tackle right here, Mike Huzar, is going to take this man on the block. But Zach Dumas, the cornerback, is going to come in here, and he's going to make the play on the blitz right there because Mike Huzar is already occupied. He comes around the outside. Jamie Morris looking downfield, doesn't see him, and he goes down. And the injury appeared to be one to his leg. He's out of the game. Michael Taylor has come in. There's Brown who has a broken left thumb. A dislocated right thumb and now looks like real concern with that leg. Michael Taylor on a third and 15 to Morris. Morris getting something back 50 and he picks up the first down on a third and 15. Morris gets the first down to the 46 of Ohio State. In some other game during the course of the season where the Michigan team's game plan might be to throw the football field downfield a lot. This would be a big change in quarterback because Taylor doesn't have the strong arm that Brown has. 
but with a ball controlled offensive game plan it might not be as great a factor especially if Jamie Morris continues to run as he has so far well Taylor an excellent option quarterback he had 144 yards in his only start this year against Northwestern here's Morris again a nifty run adding yardage to his total that last game was a gain of 18 giving him 52 and now he adds another four he has 56 yards we'll keep you posted on that yeah. Opportunity to try to get uh, 130 and set the single season rushing mark. You know, Demetrius Brown, as you said, played with a broken thumb, broken finger, and a dislocated thumb. People knocked his hands around and try and get him out of the ball game like that. I guess they figured the only way to stop him is just to take his legs out. So Taylor has taken over. Second down and seven. Taylor out of Lincoln Heights, Ohio. He sends Greg McMurtry, number one in motion. We're going to have a reverse. This is John Kodazar on the end of it. He's wide open to the 30, and he's knocked down at the 25. Taylor, the quarterback, threw the key block on that play. So without Brown in there, Taylor mixing it up well and helping his own cause. Watch the block on this play. As you see, McMurtry going in motion. There's the pitch. And a very safe handoff. Now watch the block right here by Taylor. Pursuit's coming. He gets low, pops the big man up. It's number 55, Ray Holloman, a defensive end that he takes into the air. That ends up being a 20-yard game by Kolazar, who we mentioned. They're glad to have him back. He's been out the last two weeks with Mono. First down now at the 25. Robert in motion. Bucks the fullback to the 20. Let's go to Steve for an update on the injury to Demetrius Brown. Gary, thank you very much. Demetrius Brown has his right knee taped. They're moving him over to the other end of the bench area. Uh, they're not really sure what the injury is right now, but a couple people tell me that it does not look good for him for the rest of the day. So a young man who's had his share of injuries and now certainly the worst of the season for him as he uh, limps down to the other end of the bench with a bad right knee. Looks, Gary? looks like he wants to get ready now for January 2nd, the Hall of Fame Bowl, the way that one looks, Lynn. I think so. Hopefully he can come back by that time. Second down, six. Morris again. He's been a workhorse. He pays for it that time. Good reaction by Ohio State as he cuts it inside the 20 to the 18. Ray Jackson, the rover or strong safety, along with Spielman, combining on the stop. It comes to a third down and still almost five yards to go. Well, it, Demetrius Brown has had one of those years where he's had outstanding performances. He's been inconsistent, but he's always been able to play hurt. But right now, that may have come to an end. Taylor was hurt in the game against Northwestern. He had a 65-yard run, pulled a leg muscle. He wasn't available a couple of weeks ago. Third and five on the option. Taylor, this is his specialty, but he's not going to get the first down. So Ohio State reacting well. They may have lost a yard on that play. The great reaction was by Mike Sullivan, the man who made the tackle. He's playing nose guard, and the option is designed to be run on one of the linebackers or a cornerback or somebody on the end of the line of scrimmage. All those people were occupied. Taylor made the right decision to cut it up, but Sullivan, with a good lateral movement, got across to make the tackle. Here's Mike Gillette, Michigan's all-time leading field goal kicker, and we're going to have to wait because we have come to the end of the first quarter of play. Michigan with a 7 to nothing lead. They're going to try to add to that when we come back. Michigan with a 7 to nothing lead. Mike Gillette will try to build that to 10 to nothing. This will be a 34-yard field goal. Gillette is 10 of 12 this year, his longest of 48 yards. This junior just shattering every kicking record that Michigan's ever had. Monty Robbins, the punter, will hold. We start the second quarter. Gillette's kick into the wind, and it's good. So Mike Gillette gives the Wolverines a 10 to nothing lead. The Wolverines play now without their starting quarterback, Demetrius Brown. About the Honda Accord, the experts at... The Los Angeles Rams, rejuvenated by Charles White. The Washington Redskins, they lead the NFC East. They meet on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Well, the first quarter was all Michigan. They lead it 10 to nothing. Jamie Morris having a big first quarter. He had 56 of those 75 yards rushing for Michigan. And they're all designed to be just short little plays running to the inside and outside. Nothing fancy, everything very simple. And they just control the ball game. He 
carried nine times. Coming up next now, the game from the Coliseum of Los Angeles. And I know, Lynn, you're not interested at all in that game, are you? Oh, UCLA and USC, uh, one of the games of that. I guess I've never really cared much for that ball <laughs> game. <laughs> one of the great ball games in college football. A couple of great players out there, too, on the offensive line for UCLA. Big man, Dave Richards. USC has an outstanding lineman also, and Dave Cadigan. So some great matchups for you. Pretty fair country quarterbacks, too, in that game. A couple of guys who could be Heisman Trophy candidates themselves next year. Troy Aikman and Rodney Peake. It's coming up following this one. Sukowitz to kick off. Bouncing very short. Who's going to get on it? Ohio State's workman eventually does. Kind of nonchalant getting to that one, weren't they? I don't understand why Carlos Snow did, did, just didn't pick that ball up. He seemed to be closer. Well, that's some of that inexperience maybe showing again. He's the true freshman. Tupa coming in. You can see, and we said this during the last break, it looks like Ohio State can throw the football. And Tupa, of course, four for four. What they have to do is just throw two, three downs in a row if they want the running game to open up. Not long passes, medium routes down the field. If they're getting a big pass rush, then go to the draw or the screen plays. Let's see what they did. They've been throwing a lot on first down. They're going to do it again. Tupa setting up in the pocket. Long throw up the field intended for Workman. He had something on that one. Bishop over there defending on the play. And Workman looks like he's hurt. Workman has been very durable. And he goes down on the far side. And they are very, very thin at the flanker and split in positions. Starting all the way back at the start of the year when Chris Carter... Had the problem with his agent and eventually was ruled ineligible. Let's see if we can pick up how Workman was hurt on this play. He's running down that sideline. The ball's thrown. He can't make the play. He's hit. He's out of bounds. You can see he's starting to show some pain as he throws his head back. May just step funny on it. Now the officials want uh, a momentary break in the action. Maybe to be sure Workman's off the field far enough. Well, he's off the sideline. He's just laying there. He hasn't gotten up yet. Hey, hey. Okay, well, they want to be sure that everything's all right. So he's coming back now, and they're ready to go. 14.52 to go. It's Michigan with a 10 to nothing lead. They scored on a one-yard run by Jamie Morris, capping a 73-yard drive. And then the first play of the second quarter, Mike Gillette added a 34-yard field goal. That's where we stand right now. Michigan expected that play-action pass. He had good rush and a great rush on it, and it took too long for him to go downfield. Tupa had some pressure. Bobby Olive has checked in, number 39, replacing the injured workman. Tupa. Oh, look out. There's Messner. Of all the games we've done this year, I have never seen a more effective defensive player than this guy's been this year. He has absolutely, as I said earlier, been unblockable. You see him here at number 60. The man coming out is Carl Coles. When they say he's quick, good movement, takes a great angle right there. He knows he's got them wrapped up. He can't see whether he's throwing the football or not. He's just going to wrestle them down. He had the football, so he gets another sack. Messner, all Big Ten a year ago, strong candidate for All-American honors. Lost back to the 10. It's now third and 19. He's got another year for Bo Schembechler. Michigan's going to be very tough next year. Koopa back at the one. He is getting out of the end zone fairly. Ward Manuel chasing him in the end zone. Almost got a safety. He averted that, but they're in still deep trouble. Now take a look at take a look at that line. The offensive line, you've got two, three people blocking Mark Messner to leave him one-on-one, -on -one, Ward Manuel and George Cooper. And Ward Manuel almost gets him for the sack. So that time, Mark Messner, showing how much talent he has, deserving of two or three people to block him, frees up Ward Manuel to put the pressure on Tupa. Well, you talk about pressure. Tupa hardly has enough room to get this punt underway. He's back as far as he can go. He had his first block last week against Iowa. They've come close here on both punts he's had so far. 13.09 to go until half, 10 to nothing. Michigan to the lead, and they're going to get the football. No real rush. They didn't put the rush on at all. Surprising. Back goes Kolazar at the 42. Try to get to the near side, and Ohio State covers it effectively at the 45. And so Ohio State came out of that one in excellent shape. A 55-yard punt that time by Tupa, his best of the day. A three-yard return. Roy Peel down to make the stop for the Buckeyes. 
the Rose Bowl berth is on the line. Fifth-ranked UCLA meets crosstown rival USC in the Pac-10 showdown of the year, next on ABC's College Football. Welcome back to Michigan Stadium. Let's go back down to Steve on the sideline. Thank you, Gary. Well, the word on Demetrius Brown is not as bad as we thought. The team physician looked at his knee. He talked to head coach Bo Schembechler. They are taping that knee right now, and he could very well be going back in the ball game. Also, the offensive coordinator gathered all the receivers together, and no matter what quarterback is in there for Michigan, they think they have found a flaw in the Ohio State defense uh, in the secondary, so they very well may open this thing up in the air as well. Back up to you. Well, they've done very well thus far, Steve. The first two times they've had the ball, they've scored a touchdown and a field goal. And on this last carry, Jamie Morris just added almost eight more yards to his total. Uh, just a point of strategy. Sometimes you find a flaw like that, and you say, well, maybe we can get the big play. But if everything is working well for you, you may not use it. You may save it to let it on the ball game in case something happens and you need it. Michael Taylor's replaced Brown at the quarterback spot, gets to the fullback Bunch, and Bunch is able to get the first down, pounding straight ahead inside the 45 to the 43. That offensive line of Michigan, when it's been healthy, has been very good. They've just had to continually have patchwork all year long to keep it healthy, and right now they are controlling the line of scrimmage. First down, 44-yard line of Ohio State. Going back to that punt, Lynn, were you surprised Michigan didn't come after Tupa? not surprised Tupa had not punted very well so they have him backed up they had three people back deep they just decided if you got a short kick we're going to go for the good return and field position that was a 55 yarder for Tupa got him out of some trouble but Michigan tried to put the pressure back on here is Morris to the 40 35 and he has another first down a very close to it at the 34 yard line and Morris looks like he's headed for a big afternoon for this Michigan team Morris is doing a great job of just reading this, reading the blocking. He's getting an excellent job uh, blocking out in front. Mike Huzar, 74, crashing down that line. You see 32, Jared Bunch, just getting enough of Zach Dumas pushing him to the outside to create the running lane. 73 yards now for Morris on 11 carries. They are just short of the first down by a half yard. Second down, Phil Webb has come in as they come to the wishbone. Morris again needing 130 to set the single season rushing record and there is a first down run by Bunch looking ahead to Monday night here ABC's NFL Monday Night Football it'll be the Los Angeles Rams against the Washington Redskins Charles White what a game he had the last time 213 yards and they made a change at quarterback for the Redskins oh they got, that was a great ball game for Charlie White a lot of running backs that weekend played extremely well Eric Dixon had a big game day for the Colts Herschel Walker for the Cowboys. And Doug Williams is the new quarterback right now, oh, replacing Jay Schrader. On the first down, here comes Webb. Webb is a senior who last week scored the winning touchdown, a two-yard run, pulling out the game against Illinois. And as Bo described it, it was his most important carry of his Michigan career. And you know what Webb said? It was just glad to be able to do something for Bo. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Bo inspires that kind of... That kind of trust, that kind of game in his plays. Second down two at the 22. Michigan leading 10 to nothing. They are in control of this football game. Taylor giving to Webb again, and he looks to be a little bit short of the first down. Spielman over there to make the stop. Chris Spielman, the most intense player that Earl Bruce has ever coached. You know what he does? Sometimes for as long as 20 minutes of a game, Chris Spielman will stare at a bumper sticker he has, and it says, play in the NFL. That's the kind of intensity he has and the goal that he set for himself. A dream. He's got that, that vision. He plays with that great intention, that great concentration. Third down, less than a yard. Bunch, who's been doing a very good job up the middle for Michigan picks up the first down to the 17 and the thought that's going through my mind right now Lynn is the week that Ohio State has gone through you wondered how the team would react and right now it has not spurred them on the firing of Earl Bruce it has not spurred them on it has not caused them to do anything tremendous or great at this point in time give some credit to the fact that they're going up against a very strong Michigan offensive line that's just driving down the football field my real concern is if this team gets down and stays down for too much longer, they'll never get back in the ballgame. Alan Taylor adding to their woes. 
as he takes it to the eight yard line. Pretty nice situation for Mr. Shim Becker, the dean of Big Ten coaches. When you lose a guy like Brown, to have a player like Taylor who loves to run the option and the way their line is blocking, he could have a very big afternoon. Take a look at the play. You see the option. He's going to pitch. The man comes out and covers that pitch. He cuts it up inside. Tries to make a little move. Squeezes between them for a, an extra two. Second down, a yard to go. Taylor looks like he's changing something at the line of scrimmage. Comes from the wishbone. Gives to Morris. Morris to the five. It'll be a first and goal from that point. In there right now is Dave Chester. He did not start at that right guard spot. Dean Dickman, a true freshman out of Wisconsin, did. As they've had to play, uh-oh, wait a minute, Morris is hurt, and that could hurt his bit to set that single season rushing mark. He needed 130 yards, and on that last carry, picking up the first and goal to the five, he gets up, but it looks like he's running it off. He has 76 yards on 12 carries thus far. Tony well, Bowles will come in to replace him. Well, I tell you, That'll make your heart skip a beat when you see Jamie Morris go down like that and he's been playing so well. His durability has just been exceptional. First and goal from the five. Taylor giving off to Webb. Webb gets to maybe the three yard line and he's shoved back. Keep in mind that with Jamie Morris on the sideline, you see him there. Tony Bowles could be one of the great running backs for Michigan in the future. He's very quick, very strong. All Bowles says about him is that he could be great. Smooth, gifted. They will have three guys vying to be the heir apparent to Jamie Morris. The man you mentioned, Bowles, Tracy Williams, and a guy that's hurt right now, Alan Jefferson, who's the fastest player on the team and had a 70 yard run earlier this year. Yeah, broke his arm in practice, taking on the blocker. Second and goal now from the three for the Wolverines. 10 0. Bo Shin Beckler's team on top. Look at Taylor's fake. Wide open. He threw it poorly. Derek Walker was wide open, the tight end. Taylor is really upset at himself. You could not fake the ball any better than he did. Everyone was fooled, and then he just took too much off of the ball. Now watch him. He puts a ball in, fakes it, puts it behind his back. Look at him just standing there. No one knows he has a ball. His man is wide open, and he knew it. All he had to do is throw it in there. Now, it should have been a better pass. You, say, you have to say it was Taylor's fault. But when you look at that, Derek Walker was also backing up away from the pass. He should have been standing there coming back to the football. Boy, was he upset. You saw the reaction. Third and goal now from the three. Morris, by the way, has come back into the game. Taylor trying to option, and he's going to be short. It's going to bring up a fourth and goal. Morris was the trailing back. They ran that option to the short side of the field. Didn't have the maneuvering room they'd like to have. Well, when you run it to the short side, you obviously just can't stretch it out as far. The boundary becomes another defender. That's Chris Billman, the man we've been talking about, the finalist for the Lombardi Award and the Butkus Award. He gets to the outside, plays off the blocks very well to make that tackle. The fans wanted to go for it, but they will not. And a field goal attempt coming up for Gillette, who's already kicked a 34-yarder. This will be from 19. He's from the right hash mark. Robbins to hold, and the kick is up. And Gillette has added three more points. Ohio State able to keep him out of the end zone, but giving up the field goal. They nail trail 13 to nothing in the second quarter. Well, this rivalry hooking up for the 84th time. Began a long time ago, 1897, and all three times that Michigan has had the football, they've come away with some points. Their first time, a touchdown. The last two times, Gillette has added field goals, and it's 13-0 in favor of the Wolverines. I want to be around 19... Was it 1897 this game yes. first began? I want to be here in 1997 when these two teams play. Well, if you don't what change your ways, if you don't change your ways, Lynn, you don't have any chance. What do you mean change my ways? What are you talking about? Circle <laughs> <laughs> so, it's kicking off. It's going to be a short kick. Now Snow comes up. He's got it to 25, 30, 35, and that's the best field position Ohio State has gotten after a kickoff. So they'll set it up there just across the 35-yard line. Limping off the field is Tim Williams, one of their linebackers. This is a big afternoon, college football. What a conclusion to the regular season. And there's a surprise, but really not a 
surprise when you try to go into Happy Valley and play those guys there. Penn State's tough. They, I think they want to bend some poor play they had a, against Pitt. They lost that football game. First down now across the 35. Seven minutes to go in this first half. 13 to nothing, Michigan. Tupa on the option. Pitches back to Snow. Snow picking up some of the yardage. Prior to that carry, Ohio State rushing had a minus eight yards. And that reminds me when we did an Ohio State game earlier this year, Michigan State held it to two yards for the whole game. For the whole game. That was also the first time on first down they elected not to throw the football. Anticipating a good rush, picking up good yardage on the running play. To the 41 now, second down four for the Buckeyes. See if, I, see if I can second guess a little bit. I think they're going to run a screen or something here. What do you think? All right, we'll see. Workman, by the way, is back into the game. Well, nice guess. <laughs> here is Snow. He got a yard at best. It'll bring up a third down. So Workman has come back in. As you might recall, he was shaken up on the far sideline. So we got Morris back in, but Demetrius Brown, very questionable whether he'll play the rest of this day. So Tupa now has a third down, still a long three, almost four yards to go. In, in reference to Demetrius Brown, they seem to have this game in, in hand. If this game gets real tight, maybe he'll go back into the ball game. But why take a chance? Well, and Taylor has been able to march him to a couple of field goals since Brown went out of there. Tupa back. Pressure coming. Mallory on the blitz. Hurried it up. Snow couldn't hang on, but that was Doug Mallory, the coach's son, the son of Bill Mallory, the Indiana coach, who was coming on the blitz, and Tupa felt the pressure. Well, he felt the pressure. I called the screen one play too soon. It's a good call. They've got it going to the right. His pressure is going to come in from the left. Just a high pass. Snow couldn't jump up and hang on to it. So they got to get rid of the football once again. Snow, not very big target out there. It's 5-9. But Tupa, the timing off on the play, now has to go back and punt the football. But that's the kind of play they need. That was the right call under, under those circumstances. Last time, he booted 155 yards from the end zone. Coltazar goes back to the Michigan 10. He has a win behind him. Coltazar coming up. He'll take it at the 16. To the 20. You look out. 30, 35, 40, 45. He's to the 40 of Ohio State down the sideline and drop. There is a flag, however, on the play. Clear back at the 15-yard line. Ray Jackson eventually caught him. And Kobazar coming back from mononucleosis, the second leading punt returner in the Big Ten, almost took that one all the way. He did a fine job of evading a couple of blockers, picking a hole. You see good blockers. He slipped right in between two of his people. I think that's going to be the flag. You just saw a blue jersey roll into the back of number 49 for the Ohio State Buckeyes. I think that might be the flag on the play. The colors are doing a very good job picking up a block by Alan Bishop, number 10 downfield. I'll tell you, for a guy that's been under the weather, he shows he can still run very well. He's one of the fastest players on this team. As a matter of fact, I had said in the Minnesota game that he was going to be out for the remainder of the season. And he walked up to me in practice and says, what do you mean I'm through for the season? I'm back. The hands. Yes, I said, I'm Third back. Down. I said, because I had a brother who had mononucleosis, and he was out for about six weeks. He said, well, actually, I had mononucleosis early October, and they just diagnosed it later on. Well, that penalty wipes out a 63-yard return. It's a dynamite doubleheader. First, Notre Dame faces Louisville. Then the mighty Indiana Hoosiers meet Kentucky. A new season begins on ABC's College Basketball, December 5th. Michael Taylor will start this drive from the 11-yard line. Michigan making their only real mistake of this first half as they have dominated. Colazar's 63-yard punt return wiped out with the penalty, moving the ball back now to the Michigan 11-yard line. 13-0. The Wolverines, 5.53 to go in the first half. McMurtry and Callaway split to the near side. Taylor, in place of the injured Demetrius Brown, gives to Jamie Morris. And Morris gets two to the 13. It'll bring up a second down and eight yards to go. 
Mike Sullivan and Eric Cummerell make the stop for Ohio State. Number 67, John McCallum. We've talked about him playing extremely well. He also wears a visor underneath his face mask. He told me, played in the ball game, got a finger in there, scratched his retina. Also, had one smashed on him in spring practice, so now he has a real hard plastic visor there. Well, he said he used to grip the inside of his helmet, too, and pulling down. Taylor back to throw in second and eight. Callaway is open, and he has a first down. Chris Callaway has come on the last couple of weeks after Kobazar was out of the lineup, catching that ball in front of William White, who eventually knocked him out of bounds. It'll be a first down for Michigan. Chris Callaway had to play a real tough ball game against Minnesota, against uh, Minneapolis. The Gophers there in that ball game when all the receivers were down, had a couple that he should have hung on to, dropped them, but he's hung in there, made a couple of clutch catches for him, and right there, that was a respectability pass by Taylor to get that defense looking. Makes up for that little short toss he missed in the end zone. That was a gain of 24 yards. There he goes, Jamie Morris. He's headed for the record. And he's excited. He probably was a little scared earlier that he might not be able to continue, but what a burst up the middle by number 23. Take a look at the blocking. He just comes crashing through the line. Jeff Brown, number 80, Dan, Dan Chester, number 64, on the other side, make tremendous blocks to open up that hole. And then after he gets up ahead of steam, this is like bowling for dollars, and he knocks into a couple of pins. He already has 97 yards. His high for the year is 182 against Wisconsin. Here is Bucks. It's fumbled. And it's picked up number 99. That's Mike McCray, a linebacker, has it for Ohio State. So that stops that drive. And at the 39, the Buckeyes get a break. Boy, when you look at this fumble here, you now see how costly that penalty that brings back that kickoff. That great punt return by Colazar. Jared Bunch goes in there and the ball just pops right up into the air right into the hand of Mike McCray. So the Buckeyes trailing 13 to nothing have it at their own 39. Tupa straight back to throw on first down. Excellent protection. Side arms it to Snow. Snow at the 40. And for all that the ball I believe is loose again. And Michigan thinks they have it. The official is saying the ball is down right there. You see him. Alan Bishop, number 10. Boy, he pops people, doesn't he, when oh, he comes yeah. up? He comes up extremely strong. Second leading tackler on this ball club. We're talking about number 10 for Michigan. Alan Bishop came into this ball game with 61 tackles. Carlos Snow makes one of the one of the real rookie mistakes. He catches a short pass, and he just dances around laterally too much. And right there, Bishop makes contact. We're coming in from behind, number 79 with Ward Manuel. Manuel is getting better and better. They love him as a freshman out of New Orleans, but it is Ohio State's ball. They picked up a yard, and that's all. Second down, nine. Tupa having trouble getting out from under center again. Swings it over the middle. That is the fullback, Bill Matlock, the backup fullback, a junior out of Columbus. That'll be a first down. Let's go to Steve Alvarez. Thank you, Gary. Just an observation. I spent time behind both these teams' benches. You would think Ohio State would be as emotional as Michigan is fired up, especially with this being Earl Bruce's last game, but they seem kind of flat. I think the kids on the Michigan side are much more pumped up for this game, and it's obvious with what they're doing with the football, both offensively and defensively, but maybe this fumble recovery is the spark that Ohio State needed. Let's find out. Gary? Well, they have it now after that fumble recovery at the midfield strike. 345 to go first half. Pitch comes back to Snow. And Snow will get four yards out of that, showing his lateral ability. Gonna bring up second down. Carlos Snow was outstanding in high school. He scored 104 touchdowns. That is a high school record. 7,856 yards rushing can see why he was so heavily recruited out of the Cincinnati area. His first start was against Wisconsin. Two weeks ago, he gained 79 yards, and last week a career-high 96 against Iowa. Second down, seven. Tupa, got pressure coming from Messner. Messner trips him up. Mark Messner seemingly everywhere. Number 60 coming that time up the middle from behind and getting a piece of Tupa and his forward progress to the 45. Well, that's 
the third pass in the last four downs that they've run the football, that they've thrown the football. Now, when Tupa drops back, he's going to be looking downfield. He's not going to find a receiver downfield, but what he's going to find is Mark Messner coming in from behind. Now, he starts this run, but he just starts it a bit too late. They've really got to go to shorter pass patterns because they're not getting time. Well, they can't block number 60. Third down, five now for Ohio State from the 45 of Michigan. Tupa this time straight back. Near sideline, Everett Ross, and that'll be a first down. And Ohio State now starting to build something as we go into the waning minutes of this first half. Earl Bruce, all of Woody Hayes without a heavy jacket on on that far sideline. Yeah, he's up against it. He's got to get his offensive line to try and figure out just where Mark Messner is. Mark Messner keeps bopping around. But you know, Woody, for so many years, remember he came out in shirt sleeves, never wore the coat. I would say this, Bruce at least has a long jacket on and no telling what underneath. That's kind of a Big Ten tradition for a few guys, isn't it? From the 31, first down, pitch to Snow. He's got a block from Matlock. He's to the 30, and he's rammed out of bounds at the 27. Bill Matlock playing a lot now. He is a walk-on who wanted to play at Ohio State since he was five years old and now getting a chance on that lead block to help the Buckeyes cause. That's amazing, isn't it? He's out of a job and the winningest coach of the Big Ten of the past nine years. You start looking at what this guy has done. Four Big Ten titles, two Rose Bowls, two Fiesta Bowls, a Cotton Bowl. He's probably saying to himself, well, what do you have to do to make people happy? And he's on the unemployment line right now. Second down, five. Single running back is Cooper. Back to throw, Tupa. Stepping up, dumps it off to Cooper, the big fullback. Lowers his head, and with that second effort, has got the first down to the 20. Cooper's an excellent receiver. He has 18 catches coming in. And he had 12 straight games where he caught at least one pass that was ended last week. And Cooper is one of those emotional leaders of this football team. When I talk to the coaches, I said, if your team is down, who can you turn to to get the team fired up? He said on offense, we turn to our center, Jeff Ulanek, and to George Cooper. You can't get him down. He's always up, pumps everybody else up. Right now, a little emotion from this Ohio State team. A little success helps. They trail 13 to nothing. First down, just inside the 20. Snow and Cooper in the backfield. Tupa back, looking near side. Rods, he made the catch at the two. Alan Bishop trying to stay with him, but he got it anyway. Well, this time they do everything right. They get the protection. He looks downfield. Everett Ross, the man who caught that touchdown pass on the first play of the game for 79 yards against Michigan State, runs a shorter route, but a very well executed route, driving Bishop off, and the good cut right here, driving to the outside and coming back for the ball. Hey, that was kind of like Lynn Swan used to do it, huh? <laughs> first do it. I can't do it that well today. <laughs> first and gold at the three. Tupa now 9 of 11 for 80 yards. Ohio State trying to get on the scoreboard. Snow, nothing doing there. They lost a yard on that play. It'll bring up second and goal. You see the time left. Both teams have three timeouts remaining. Ohio State going backwards on that play. They went backwards, but there was something very important I saw on that play. Tupa hands the ball off, then pretending he was rolling out to his left on a, uh, just on a bootleg, and there was no one there. 10 to 1, if the coaches see the same thing, You'll see Tupa bootlegging in for a touchdown. Is that a prediction? That's a prediction. We'll be back. Ohio State has their first timeout. On November 25th, 1950, Michigan played at Ohio State under a driving snowstorm. All the scoring resulted from the kicking game. A Michigan safety and then a touchdown came off two block punts. Ohio State's only score was a field goal in the first quarter. This legendary contest has gone down in history as the Snow Bowl of 1950. I talked to one of the players on the Michigan team, Bill Hodge, who kicked the 24th punt of the game. Chuck Hortman had kicked three, 23 of them. He was just exhausted. Hodge came in, played in that Snow Bowl, and that's a good trivia question. Who had the 24th punt? Oh. It was Bill Hodge. There's the temperature today, but no snow. 
Second and goal now from the four. Ohio State jumping around. Ross and Workman go split to the top of the field. Tupo roll that way. Throwing. Ross. Touchdown. The faithful of Ohio State seeing their team get on the scoreboard for the first time. We talked about maybe a lack of emotion. It's starting to come back for this Ohio State team. Point after attempt now. This is France. He's never missed in his entire career. He adds that one. That's his 51st straight PAT. 13 to 7. France and the Buckeyes are right back in this one. So Tupa rolling out. Got a block from Cooper from Stasniak, lofted it, and Ross going up, showing excellent athleticism, spinning, twisting, going down, and Ohio State has climbed back in. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Honda, who invites you to experience the Accord LXI four-door sedan at your local Honda dealer. And by Norelco Electric Razors for a close and comfortable shave. So Ohio State has scored. They now trail 13 to seven with a minute 36. And on that last drive, Everett Ross had three catches for 34 yards and of course the big one, the four yard touchdown grab. That's the kind of football offensively that they can play if they continue and have that kind of success, open it up. This will open up the running game for them if they need to reach back and grab it on the draws and some plays off tackle. Pat O'Mara will kick off. That's his exclusive job. France does all the other kicking. He's a sophomore out of Radford, Virginia. This is Michigan's first kickoff return of the day. And Webb will take it, the short one, up to the 25 and goes to just Good about the 30-yard line. And that's where the settle. Let's go back to that last touchdown. A touchdown play. Messner's been giving everybody a problem coming in the rush. He almost gets to Tupa as he starts to roll out. But then, here, right here, every Ross will come over here and just pause and streak to the outside, just completely running away from Doug Mallory, who's covering on that play. Now, it would be ideal if the ball comes to the outside. It goes a little bit over his head. But look at the move he makes to turn around, jump up, catch it in the hands, and pull it in. They see Everett Ross again, just coming in freezing, the pick to the outside, coming underneath the other receiver, number 42, Vince Workman. Now we have some problems on the exchange from center. Taylor going down on top of the football, getting up slowly and a little bit disgusted at himself. They're going to lose yardage back out to the, that'll be the 26-yard line, be a loss of four, it'll be second down. Taylor with one start prior to this game today, some mop-up duty and today of course pressed into service due to the entry to Demetrius Brown. They have another quarterback they don't want to use and that's Eric Bush a freshman who they desperately want to redshirt. That was an outstanding drive by Ohio State. 61 yards. Here's Taylor coming out of the quarterback spot showing his running ability and that's the first down out to the 42. Now that's not a play that they would normally run or want to run off of with Demetrius Brown especially since he came in with the two hands hurt and so forth. But when you get the backup quarterback in, what you have to do is you have to look at that game plan and say, okay, what's good for him to run? Then go to those plays. Speaking of Brown, he comes back in as you're talking. <laughs> so Brown comes into the game. This guy has more flies than a cat. Maybe they want to throw the football deep. He's seemingly always hurt, but able to answer and come back again, and he's in now. So after that 16-yard run by Taylor, Brown comes in. First down now to 43. There's Morris. Gaming 45 to the 42, and he's over 100 yards for the day. I thought putting him in, they wanted to throw the football deep. Maybe that's the illusion they wanted to give and then run the draw. Steve, you've got something down there. Say, Gary, that uh, Ohio State would love to go in the locker room right now because a major disaster on the sideline. The heaters have blown out over here, so there are no warm toes. Well, we're here at Michigan. Let's go to the other school, Ohio State. Let's take a visit to Columbus.
From all the states in more than 100 countries, they come to Ohio State. They come to study in nearly every conceivable academic area, more than 7,000 courses in more than 200 majors. They come for world-class research, a vibrant arts community, and the nation's largest recreation and intramural sports program for the education, the experience, the excellence, the Ohio State University. That's Earl Bruce along with his defensive coordinator, Gary Blackney. Ohio State trailed 13 to nothing. They've got it 13 to seven, but with 44 seconds, Michigan now marching. They have the ball at the Ohio State 42 first down. Morris now 112 yards. Remember, he needs 130 to set the single season rushing mark in Michigan. There he is. He's already carried it 15 times. Back to throw, Demetrius Brown to Morris. Morris trying to get wide, and look at him go. That is a first down, and I tell you, it looked like he was stopped back at the 42. Instead, he takes it to the 31 of Ohio State. Now, they set up this screen very nicely. They drop back, the line pulls out in front. But watch number 67. That's Mike Sullivan right there in the center of the screen. He's blocking. He's a nose guard. Now, watch him come across. He's got a shot right here. Morris just ducks and has a leg strength and upper body strength to maintain his balance and keep driving. That's the surprising thing is how strong he is. I don't think people realize that 5'7 and 183 pounds, he's that strong. Brown back to throw on first down. He's hit, but gets it off to Phil Webb. Webb to the 20. Another first down to the 19. Michigan has two timeouts remaining. 12 seconds now as they'll stop the clock to move the sticks, and Michigan will use their second timeout. Although it was a very different situation, I am now reminded of the Iowa game we did here, where Iowa went for the onside kick at the end of the first half. Bo Schimbleckler's team lined up through the Hail Mary pass, and it was a touchdown going in at the end of the first half. Right now, time was running out. Although not one big play, they dr they're driving down the field in excellent position to score with 12 seconds at the end of the first half. I will assure you of one thing about this game. It's warmer out of the Coliseum <laughs> in Los Angeles. UCLA and USC to follow. What a battle that's going to be. And UCLA, talking to Terry Donahue last week, he says, you know something? I'm 9-1, and one and I still haven't decided anything. Yeah. You know, this is a, he's got a tough decision in terms of, you know, just how he wants to play this game. He's got so many good ball players. Gaston Green was injured, came back and played last week. But I'm sure Gaston Green will be out there, and he'll start, and he'll play very well. If they win, it will be the first time a UCLA team has won 10 games in the regular season. And that would be uh, quite a matchup, as they would meet Michigan State if they would do that. And that's the last time Michigan State made it to the Rose Bowl. It was 1966. And Terry Donahue played on that UCLA team. That game, USC-UCLA, this is the 19th time that that game has decided for both teams who goes to the Rose Bowl. How many times in your career at USC? Twice. Twice? Twice. My junior and senior year. We're both undefeated. From the 18, first down, Michigan now with one timeout remaining. Brown is 4-4 in this game. Going for the end zone, Colazar dropped it. William White, defending on it, may have obstructed his vision, but Colazar had it and could not hang on to it. William White is a defensive cornerback who plays to the wide side of the field. He takes on the best receiver from whatever team he plays against. Right here, Colazar has him beat. The ball's thrown a little bit late. He comes in front trying to knock the ball down and misses it. But the distraction is just enough to throw John Colazar off. Well, they can't take a chance on not getting the clock stopped, so they're going to try the field goal now. This will be a 30-yard attempt. Gillette's already kicked two of 34 and 19 yards. Robbins to hold, 35-yarder, and it does not look good, and there's not. A real knuckleball. He has only missed two prior to that one all season long, and that ball looked like one of my tee shots. <laughs> it came off the tee extremely low, and I, I'm not quite sure if someone from that defensive unit may not have gotten a hand on it also. We'll take another look at it. You see him get it off right there. It's just a low shot. It is a low shot. And you can see how upset he is. Ohio State 
boy, they have really gotten out of a very, very difficult situation because they still remain in this one very, very much. Instead of being down 16 to 7 and having to score twice, they could still win it with one score. There's the time left, three seconds. From the 20 now, Tupa probably would just fall on this one. That shows you what I know. He's going to scramble out and throw it. And nobody open. And we've come to the end of our first half of play. So Ohio State, after trailing 13 to nothing, getting back into this game, scoring at the 136 mark of the first half. And it has put it as kind of a crisis time here at Michigan, the direction that their football and athletic program will be going. I, you know, Bo is very concerned about that. And I don't know if I would really consider it a crisis time because I think the heart of the football program is Bo Beckler. And as long as Bo Beckler is here, is here at Michigan, I think they're going to be in good shape. Well, he said unequivocally yesterday in an interview, I said, Bo, is there any possibility you would step down from coaching to become AD? He said, let me say this. If I can physically do it, and he's going to have a physical next Wednesday, he said, I will continue coaching. There's his record against Ohio State. He's four and four against Earl Bruce. So we're ready to go in this 84th meeting. Omaro will be kicking off for the Buckeyes. Two men going back now for the Michigan Wolverines. Jamie Morris and John Coltazar. 13-7, and this kick very short. Webb again will return it. That's two he's returned in this game. He'll bring it out to the 30, 35, look out, 40, 45, and Webb knocked out of bounds just short of the 50-yard line. Webb with a big run last week and contributing in this game on the kickoff. So from the 49, Michigan will have it. 31-yard return. Well, Webb doesn't have that kind of speed where if he gets open here, he's going to break away and just run away from everyone. But what he has is good sense, good running ability. He follows what blocking he does have, gets to the outside, and picks up as much yards as he can, as many yards as he can, just running straight ahead. One thing we'll keep you posted on is the progress of Jamie Morris. He has 112 yards on 15 carries. He needs 130 to set that Michigan single-season rushing mark. Callaway comes in motion for the 49. Here comes Morris, and Morris goes nowhere. May have lost a half yard. Ray Holloman, number 55, made the stop. Holloman's a very interesting story. He started a year ago in the kickoff classic, had to drop football last year because of a severe knee injury. He's battled back from it, but he has to drain his knees each week, which curtails a lot of activity in practice. But he's come back this is senior year to really contribute to this team. Now that's remarkable when you consider that was both knees that he has had injured and operated on. He wanted to play, and obviously Earl Bruce is glad he decided to come back for this his senior year. Second down, they lost a yard on the play. Second and 11, Callaway in motion once again. Demetrius Brown starting the second half. He's on the option, and he'll spin it to the 49. I just can't get over Brown playing. It looked like when he went down, he'd have to think of Tampa on January 2nd, not playing the rest of the day, but he's come back as Chris Spielman made the stop on that play. Well, apparently when the doctors checked him out, they realized there was no real serious damage. It may have just been bruised or sprained a bit. He tapes it up. He's in a tight ball game, and the coach wants to win it, and he really wants to play in it. If this were any other game other than the Ohio State game, he may not have wanted to play in it that badly to take a chance. See how tough it's been for him to rush, minus yardage thus far. He's a tough kid out of the Miami area. Pressure coming from Camaro in the backside, and that's Spielman. Chris Spielman, Mr. Intensity, the All-American, who leads... Ohio State all time and solo tackles just contributed another one. We'll take a look at Spielman, number 36. Came into this game 140 tackles. You see him blitzing all the way. Nobody blocks him. Morris tries to go down low and actually does cut him. But the forward momentum just takes him right into Demetrius Brown and he takes him down from behind. He was like a bowling ball knocking everybody down on that play. The punt be Robbins. Robbins hits it well. He's an outstanding punter. Everett Ross has it on the fly up to the 35 of flag as he advances to the 38 yard line. Monty Robbins averaging over 44 yards a punt. Third of the Big Ten, eighth in the nation. And that was his first punt of the afternoon. Let's see what this penalty flag's all about. Ross that time really had a head of steam up when he caught the ball and headed to the far sideline. He sure did. Zach Dumas, number 21 came in on a good charge 
They're going to bring it back. It's going against Ohio State. But the punt came away well. Ross did something that a good punt returner has to do. Illegal use of hands on the offense. First down. When he made that catch, Jerry, he made that catch moving forward. So the catch and movement were simultaneous. We're going to have a break in the action with Michigan leading 13 to 7, and Ohio State has the ball for the first time in the second half. Bull Berth is on the line. Fifth ranked UCLA meets crosstown rival USC in the Pac 10 showdown of the year, next on ABC's College Football. in his football game. The only time they scored was after the turnover. McCray came up with a fumble recovery. They took it in on the touchdown pass, but early, as you can see, it was three plays and punt. And as you can see, after the turnover, they took it on the 39-yard line, which is their best field position of the afternoon. Their first snap of the second half. And Tupa on target to Snow, and Snow's off to the races. Over there is Mallory to try to hem him in. He dodges him. He's to the 10. Snow, touchdown. Seventy yards. Making some adjustments at halftime. It appears that the Buckeyes are able to stop the running attack of Michigan. Get the ball after a good punt return by Everett Ross. And then a great play by Carlos Snow with some excellent blocking again by Ross. You can see why they're ex so excited about the freshman. Brands to add the point after. He's 51 for 51 in his career, and he can give Ohio State the lead for the first time in this game. And he does. 14-13, Ohio State. If you're wondering, that is not the longest touchdown pass of the year. Ohio State had a 79-yarder in the first snap against Michigan State earlier this year. Well, take a look again. It's not a long play downfield. They get by Alan Bishop on the play. Everett Ross is down. Look at the block right there. Everett Ross makes on number 20, Anthony Mitchell. That's enough to spring, uh, spring him down the sideline. Then a good move inside Mallory, number eight, and the rest is history. It's a touchdown. So Tupa now is starting to mount some numbers. He's 11 of 14, 155 yards. And he just added 70 yards on one pass. The all-time NCAA attendance record, 106,255 was set at Michigan Stadium versus Ohio State on November 17, 1979. This is Al Troutwig in New York. In the 104th edition of The Game, Harvard had jumped out to a 7-0 lead, but now in the second quarter, Yale comes back. Quarterback Kelly Ryan finds Mike Stewart, and he gallops 63 yards for the tying touchdown. Moments ago, Yale converts a field goal and now leads 10-7 in the second. The winner claims the Ivy League. Gary? Well, we are not deciding the Big Ten representative, but it's just a typical Michigan-Ohio State game. Bo said it's never a meaningless game. It'll be a great football game, and all of a sudden, Ohio State, who was trailing at one time 13 to nothing, has taken the lead on this play. And this ball game, number 60, Mark Messner from Michigan, has been causing all kinds of problems in the backfield, forcing pressure in early passes. They've come back. They use the plays to negate that kind of quick pass rush, it ends up with Carlos Snow going for a big touchdown. Well, Earl Browse, wouldn't you have liked to have been in the locker room, hear what he had said at halftime, his last halftime address? Uh, it, it must have been quite a speech, but more importantly, some great adjustments. Yes. Thus far, they've done the right things. Morris to return this one. Michigan trailing for the first time. Morris brings it out across the 25 to the 27-yard line. Now that touchdown play was great football. You get Ross coming inside here to draw the corner over in this direction. You're going to get Snow who comes in here in that little area. He'll make the catch here. Then after the ball is thrown and caught, 
you're going to get people coming downfield. Everett Ross will come down the field, and he's going to loop back and block that man right there and spring him for the touchdown. Great team concept, great execution. Now, by no means, no small feat for Carlos Snow to read it and to go on. And there's a block by Ross downfield. You see Snow continuing in a good move on Mallory, who's a smart player. He won't often make that kind of play. He's usually a much sure tackler. I tell you, Snow can make you look bad in the open field. He can. From the 27-yard line, Michigan now playing catch-up football. Demetrius Brown rolling the near side. Pump one. He's got Kotazar deep. Kotazar's there. A little behind him. And John now has been close to making two big catches in this game. You wonder what being out of the lineup the last two weeks has done to some of his timing. He could have been just a little rusty. I like this play. He stands so close at the line of scrimmage there making the fakes. They're running an out move, and then he pumps the ball, drawing the corner up, and then Kolazar takes off deep. This ball is thrown well, but you watch Kolazar. He's drifting in to the inside as he tries to make that play. The ball's thrown perfectly. He just drifted inside. You're also looking towards the sun on that particular play, Len. Well, there's a rule. When you look into the sun, you run straight down the field and try and catch the sun. The ball is right there if you can't see it. Catch the sun. Catch the sun. Second down, 10. Here's Jamie. Horse wedging it forward. Got maybe two, three. Now, wait a minute. Well, Ohio State just fired up. I thought for a moment maybe the ball had got loose. They are fired up. It's so obvious how this game has turned around emotionally as well as on the scoreboard. And now it's going to be third down and nine. Bo Schimbeckler's got to get a handle on this game now as Ohio State coming from behind by 13, now leading by one. And they did it very, very quickly. 11 minutes, 50 seconds here in the third period. That's Welburn coming out. Callaway has replaced him at the split end position. 11.41 to go, third quarter. Brown changes the play at the line of scrimmage. McMurtry, who's been quiet all day, is put to the top. Brown gets out of there somehow, but he's going to take a loss to the 25, and they're going to have to get rid of the football. That was Mike McCray, who was an outstanding basketball player in Dayton, Ohio, and a teammate of Keith Byers, who, of course, now playing for the Eagles in the NFL. We're taking another look here. Demetrius Brown initially getting good pass protection. Number 55 comes through. That's Holloman. Then he stumbles, moves around, and number 98 comes over Mike Showalter to make that stop. Anyway, they're going to have to get rid of it. Monty Robbins, his second punt of the game. This is a beauty. Ross going back inside the 30. He'll take it at the 28, up to the 35, and Michigan's there to drop him. At the 35, Ohio State playing inspired football in this, the final game for Earl Bruce. Ohio State with the ball for the second time in the second half. The first time they able to connect on a 70-yard touchdown pass. They have the lead, 14-13. They have the ball at their own 34. 10.46 to go in the third. Tupa back, pressure coming. Deep, Ross, he's got it at the 20, fumbles it, it's loose, it's incomplete. Alan Bishop, number 10, the man defending on that play. Ross looked like he had it, but he never really probably had control over it. Ball popped up, Alan Bishop had a chance to make the play and to take this football away from him. He couldn't get a handle on the play. Ohio State not tightening up on offense whatsoever, going for it. Good move by Ross there. Just a little hesitation when you see the ball wedged in between the two of them and then batted away. Actually, it looked like Bishop had the ball for a while, didn't it? it? It came down, and they were so tight in the coverage, it's like they were both holding the ball up with their chest. Bishop, really a tough player. He's the number two tackler on this team. And that time covering very well on the pass. Second down, 10. There's a little delay to Snow. Snow bouncing around. Look out. He gets to the outside, to the 40, and he's to the 42-yard line. Well, whoever takes over at Ohio State can start building their football program around this guy. He's exciting. Oh, he certainly is. He took a play where he should not have gotten anything on the play, used his smarts, saw a little hole to the backside, and then the speed to get there. He's a yard short of the first down, breaks up third down. You know, in games like this, there are also all sorts of little stories and sidelines why people think they should win. Associate Athletic Director Bill Miles 
who's played or coached here as an assistant under Woody Hayes, was born 51 years ago on a Saturday, and Ohio State won that football game. Today's his birthday. Back to throw as Tupa near side, incomplete intended for Everett Ross at the near side, and it'll bring up fourth down. Very interesting call on third and a yard. I guess they figure they just haven't been able to run it at all, so they go to the airways, and they're going to run out of downs. Hey, that reminds me, Lynn. I've been wanting to do this for a couple of games. Jerry Hanlon, who's the offensive line coach at Michigan, has wanted me to say hello to a delightful lady. It's his mother in North Bend, Ohio, Mrs. Nell Hanlon. She is 94 years young, November 7th with her birthday, and she was given the game ball when Michigan defeated Minnesota. Nell, we just wish you well. Just glad you can watch this football game. Tupa kicks it off to Colazar, and Colazar rounded inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. Good coverage by Ohio State. Last week, Ohio State and Iowa, 16 seconds to go in the game, and Chuck Hartley, who's played remarkably well for the Iowa Hawkeyes, able to pull this game out. A 23-yard pass. The strike is thrown. DeMar Cook, the fullback, he takes it in, and Iowa defeats Ohio State last week 29 to 27. And they got the ball. Iowa took possession of the football because Carlos Snow fumbled the football and it's been something he's had a problem with all year. So back to this game. A game that's pivoted. Ohio State leading. Michigan at their own 14-yard line. 9.37 to go in third quarter. Brown looking around. He'll send Callaway in motion. Jamie Morris. And Morris got the first down. This guy is just something special. Great young man, not only a great football player, and he is just literally shattering every rushing record that Michigan's ever put together in a very, very illustrious career in a school that's had some great ones, the Harmons, the Wolfens, the Rob Lytles, and he's battering all of those guys and then some. One other guy who had some records here, Ron Johnson, he broke his, and his brother Joe Morris passed Ron Johnson against the Patriots <laughs> as a pro. Six yards to go for that record, as you saw with the graphic just a moment ago. Brown pitching back. He might get it on this play. Nope. He gets to the 25 to the 27-yard line. So on a first down 10, he picks up three. It'll be second down and seven. Was he asking for another four or five yards on that play? <laughs> well, that's the way he is is he'll get a yard or two, he'll squeeze another three or four when you don't expect it, and they'll start piling up in your career. Five yards now needed. They only gave him a yard on that play. <laughs> That's why he was pleading for another yard. <laughs> this time, Colazar split to the top of the screen, McMurtry to the near side. Second and nine. Brown back, pressure coming. And McMurtry, who has been shut out today, coming back to the ball, could not hang on. And McMurtry, who's been a big play guy for this Michigan team, still has not caught a pass. He came in here with 20, five of them going for touchdowns, and he's caught a 62-yarder, a 53-yarder this year, the sophomore out of Brockton, Massachusetts. That's amazing when you consider he's averaged 22.2 yards per catch on the season so far. They've taken him out of the game. Third down, nine. Colazar again split to the top. McMurtry to the near side. The sun shining brightly on a frigid day. But this rivalry is heating it up. Brown throwing under pressure. Up for grabs. Intercepted. That's picked off by David Brown, number 27. Brown to the 25, the 20, and dropped at the 19. Brown with his third interception, the sophomore out of Utica, New York. And in Earl Bruce's final appearance for Ohio State, his Buckeyes are really playing well. Take a look at number 55 right there in the screen. Holloman comes in. Just as he starts to throw, he's hit. He could not follow through with the arm. He was trying to go for number 40, John Colazar. So the ball flutters and just hangs on the center. Then it's David Brown, number 27, who picks it off. Picks up an escort from William White and puts him right in great field position for either the touchdown or at least a field goal attempt. Michigan's second turnover. One fumble and now an interception. The last time on the turnover, 
Ohio State scores. Let's see if they can this time. First down from the 18. Cooper, the fullback, for two. Second and eight. Well, we wondered what Earl Bruce said at halftime. Steve Alvarez has been checking that out. Thank you, Gary. The players uh, for Ohio State tell me it was relatively quiet in the locker room. They said Earl Bruce had a lot to say before the game, but when they went in at half, it was fairly quiet, and they all felt confident because they felt they were very much in this football game. So there were really no emotional speeches or anything at halftime. They just made their adjustments, and they obviously came out ready to play. Gary? I guess this is Michigan, Ohio State. You don't have to say a lot. Better believe it. Second down eight from the 16. Cooper, the single running back, Tupa back. The strike on the way to the five, spinning, fighting to the goal line. Just short of the goal line is Fitz Workman. First and goal, Ohio State. What a turnaround in this football game. What, what a great play here. Tupa comes back. As you said, passing has been the key. Sometimes you think they should run the football. The Fitz is where they've had all the success. The short passing game here. It was all Michigan early. It's all Ohio State right now. And Bo Schembechler, something he feared, that Earl Bruce's firing might give this team the added incentive if they really need it for a great series like this. And right now the Buckeyes trying to add to their lead. First and goal, Tupa diving, touchdown. wonderful end zone to score the touchdown as that end zone is crowded with Ohio State Buckeye fans. Well, the Ohio State All-American Marching Band, they dotted the eye earlier today, and right now they're adding to some of this excitement as it's 20 to 13 in favor of the Buckeyes. This kick is on the way, and believe it or not, Franz has missed the first of his career. When you say he never missed it, I said to myself, watch out, this will be the day that he misses one. And sure enough, he comes back. But Tom Tupa comes in, he's been getting better all year long, takes advantage of great play to dive over for the one touchdown. The offensive line of Ohio State Making great strides in this ball game, just driving people from the line of scrimmage. 7-11 in the third quarter, and it's Ohio State leading Michigan by seven. Gary Bender, Lynn Swan, and Steve Alvarez. I don't want anybody to think we're a jinx, but earlier this year, Mike Gillette had a string of 66 straight PATs. We came here to do the Iowa game. He missed his first. And today we were talking about Matt Franz had never missed one. He had hit 52 in a row, and he just missed the first of his career and keeps us a seven-point game. I don't want to take that, that rap of jinxing anybody. And oddly enough, it was always just after you mentioned the fact that they had never been broken. Well, I don't need that. And you don't mention no hitters. <laughs> okay. The kickoff, Sean LaFontaine is the guy who's going to take it. They're really kicking off short today, and they have their wind to their back right now. We'll take a look at this play that set up the touchdown. Now look at two receivers at the top of the screen. Looks like they're just the only receivers out there, but actually they're behind that line of scrimmage here. This man is eligible. So when the play runs, they go downfield, down here against the coverage. This receiver will just drift out here and he'll be open. There just aren't enough people to cover all three receivers over there. Just confuses him. You see him right there, he's open, makes the catch, and it's almost a touchdown. Workman, an next running back, running hard after he caught it, got it to the one. Tupa, by the way, is 12 of 17, 170 yards, two touchdowns, one rushing touchdown. He may be having a career day from the 33, first down Michigan. You wonder what Bo's got to do to recapture this game. Jamie Morris will try to. He got a yard for his effort. Momentum is so big, and right now it's obviously in favor of Ohio State. And one player in particular, number 55, Ray Holloman. He was a man who just came through there and got a piece of Jamie Morris to slow him down. Morris now has picked up one yard in the last two carries as he zeroes in on that rushing record. And you talk about that momentum. Remember what happened you said it in the first half. One turnover by Michigan. That set up the Ohio State touchdown. From that moment on, it's been Ohio State in this football game. 
20 to 13 in favor of Ohio State. It was 13 to nothing Michigan early. Brown back on his second and nine. Up it comes to Morris on the screen, and Morris run out of bounds at the 38-yard line. It'll be four or five yards short of the first down. Morris, a real weapon, the good hands. He's got those long arms, even though he's only 5'7. He has the long arms, able to come up with the catch. It'll bring up a third down five for Michigan. And there's no there's no way at this point in the ball game that Bo Schimbeckler is going to give up on his running attack, even though they're behind. He's got plenty of time to control this football game. Two turnovers and two scores for Ohio State. That's being opportunistic. Brown back on the third and five. The pass, McMurtry can't come up with it. McMurtry coming back to the ball, but number 27, Brown, who picked off one earlier, was there and had it pretty well covered, actually. Take a look from our end zone camera. The ball thrown is going to be low. You see White coming in front right there. He goes down, and he traps it. They say he traps it. That's yep. close. Yeah. <laughs> That's close. You've got to give credit to David Brown, though, because he was over there and was really causing havoc with that pass. As an end result, Michigan's going to have to get rid of the ball, and they have some problems alignment-wise, and they're going to have to use the timeout. Well, our basketball will begin. Remark this down on December 5th. We'll have a college doubleheader from the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, David Rivers, who is a preseason All-American, leading them against Purvis Ellison and the Louisville Cardinals. That'll be followed then by the defending NCAA champion, Indiana Hoosiers, meeting the Kentucky Wildcats. Keith Smart, along with Rex Chapman for Eddie Sutton's team, live 2 o'clock Eastern Saturday, December 5th. And of course, today, later from the Coliseum, it's been sold out for a long time in the Coliseum, Tickets are at a premium, and that's the game you'll see next here on ABC, the Bruins and the Trojans. Earlier in the year, the Trojans were looking for a tailback. They had a young man named Steve Webster, had some ankle problems. He came on, came on strong enough. He's gone for over 1,000 yards. And we don't have to mention how great Gaston Green is and what he can do for you. The two brain trusts, Bruce and Jim Beckler, hooked up again. They're 4-4 four and four against each other. What an outstanding season-ending series this is. So many times determined who would end up in Pasadena. Not today, but you wouldn't know it the way these teams are playing. And here's Robbins. He's not going to punt. He's taking off on fourth down. He's got the first down to the 40, and he is hit hard. Everett Ross, who was back to field the punt, made the tackle. What a tremendous play. No one expected this to be a fake punt as he just takes it down the sideline and you see no one in front of Monty Robbins and then Everett comes in the helicopter him. Send him up into the air. Well, in great rivalries, you've got to make some great plays. And Monty Robbins, the senior out of Great Bend, Kansas, who has been such an outstanding punter all four years, Running that one for the first down, a gain of 24 to the 37 of Ohio State. Demetrius Brown back. And it's broken up. He was trying to go to Jamie Morris, and Mike Showalter, a sophomore out of Bay Village, Michigan, got a hand up. Morris was wide open on that play. Yeah, he had sent, they sent a receiver deep downfield. I think it was McMurtry, about, well, not deep, about 20, 15 yards downfield, rather. And he rolled a half roll to his right to draw the defense in that direction. And Morris has slipped underneath it. Unfortunately, Showalter at 6'4 was able to bat it down. So Robbins on a fourth and five fake punt has given Michigan an opportunity. Let's see if they can capitalize on it. Second down, 10. Callaway goes in motion. Brown on the option, fumble the ball. It's loose. Ohio State's got it. That's McCray. Big turnovers. We've already said it. Michigan's had two. The turnovers have resulted, have resulted in points for Ohio State. This is number three. 
You know what's interesting? All year long, Michigan has not been a characteristic Bo Beckler team. They've been a turnover team. Coming in today, they were minus three in the giveaway takeaway department, and that's very unusual. And today, it's haunted them again. Tupa going to take off. They'll get out of bounds, picks up six yards. Over there is Bobby Abrams to greet him on the near sideline. So Ohio State will try to continue their success after the turnover. But Bo said that we just through the years have not been a mistake riddled team. Michigan this year has been. They've thrown the interceptions. They fumbled the football. One game you might recall against Michigan State, Demetrius Brown threw a Big Ten record seven interceptions. That's something when you're a young team will happen to you. And Bo's hoping that'll go away next year. Second down five now for the Buckeyes. 5.51 to go in the third quarter. Going to have a reverse. Ross, Messner smells it out, but he got away from Messner. And Ross may have the first down. Messner really upset at himself. He had that one diagnosed from the get-go, but could not maneuver back up the field. And Ross, with a good move, may have picked up the first down. It looks like they're going to have to measure. Well, they're trying to take advantage of the fact that they're pursuing so well and making great plays. But that time, Messner just had it read. He stays back, and he has a chance to make it, but Everett Ross is a good receiver. Just makes a good move and cuts up field. Let's see if they got the first down. They did. Well, it looked like Bo had this team headed back the right direction. Now the fumble has given the momentum right back to Ohio State. They had that seven-point lead with 5.41. Ohio State's made some very fine adjustments in their game plan to take advantage of those mistakes. Tupa, for instance, when he drops back to pass now, if the receivers aren't open and a proper amount of time, he is taking off running instead of being sacked. And has run effectively today. First down, he's on the option this time. He's going to keep it. And at 6-5, lunges forward for a pickup of three. And that was Mester who made the stop. The ball now at the Michigan 45. You can tell Tupa's not an option quarterback. He came down the line. He had snow trailing. He couldn't really make the fast decision because the ball was going back and forth, back and forth, and he finally turned it upfield. They're going to give him two yards. They marked the ball out to the 46. Second down and eight. This Ohio State line is young. They have in the starting lineup three sophomores and two juniors. But starting now to certainly play much better in the second half. Tupa back on second and eight. Scrambling up. Sidearm toss. The pass is completed. It's going to be, it looks like, for a first down. It's Hickton, the tight end. Again, Hickton wasn't expected to play today. But this is a senior who wanted to be playing in Earl Bruce's last game. He's out there playing. He also had number 89, Jeff Ellis, on that same play. And a wide receiver deep. And they were almost... Uh, in a straight line. And the other tight end, Jeff Ellis, was about 20 yards downfield and wide open. Tupa's got to get his head up when he's scrambling like that and see the whole field and make, a make even better decisions. Higdon is a former linebacker, former defensive tackle, now tight end, and is an academic all Big Ten selection this year. He had 24 catches coming into the game. First down, Ross in motion. Snow looking for that little gap, and he's helmet to helmet with a Wolverine. That's Bobby Abrams, number 24. Gain of maybe a yard, giving two at most. And so Ohio State coming in here, they didn't change uniforms, didn't come out at all, what, scarlet, but they came out with the Earl headbands, a la Jim McMahon. And both Jim Beckler are pacing up and down the sideline, trying to figure out just what kind of adjustments he has to make to negate a strong or good, consistent, Ohio State offense here in the second half had those Earl hit bands. <laughs> There's movement. Now let's see if he was drawn off. Moxley, it looked like the right offensive tackle may have made number 60 Messner move. Let's see if that's true. Moxley, a sophomore. That's what it is. It'll be against Ohio State. Well, we drove over to Plymouth, Michigan last night to visit with Earl to Rick Bay. That's probably 20, 25 Good minutes. Ball. Illegal procedure against the offense. First down. And it was a very emotional Earl Bruce. His family around him. Players supporting him. A very difficult week. But right now, he's not even noticing the cold. His team playing well with the lead. Now with a second and 13. Cooper, flag on the play. He gets rid of it. 
Tupper closest to the football. But a penalty flag thrown around where Tupa was trying to scramble free. And very few penalties in this game. Very, very few. That time there were a cadre of Michigan football players in there putting pressure on them. Holding against Ohio State. So two penalties on this drive. It has been consistent throughout the ball game. Whenever Tupa has dropped back to throw, and he's looking too, too long downfield, there's a tremendous amount of pressure put on him. He is not going to get that kind of time to throw the football. It's either going to be a sack, it's going to be a holding penalty, as you had right there, or some and other misfortune. Hold against the offense, still second down. It was on Greg Zakharoff, number 51. You can probably see that in the replay. The junior out of Warren, Ohio. So the penalty now moves it back to the Ohio State end of the field at the 49. Now second and 23. So the two penalties now moving Ohio State in the wrong direction. Movement again, and that is, looks like Zakharov, or was it Moxley again? Zakharov. Yep. So after holding, this time he fires off, and three penalties now have backed him all the way up. They had it first down at the 38. Now they're all the way back to their own 44. And they've, got, and they've got to go all the way down to the 28-yard line for the first down. And they only have two downs to do it. They were second and eight, Lynn, at the 36 before this series of penalties began. Now it's second and 28. Tupa, Messner misses it. Tupa trying to run away. He gets away from Billy Harris and goes out of bounds at the 45. And for all that, he picked up a yard. To bring up third down. Now you have George Cooper, number 44, the fullback. He's 6'2, 239 pounds. You've got Mark Messner, who's 6'3, 248 pounds. There's not that much difference in the weight and the size, but you've got Mark Messner just going right through him and putting all kinds of pressure on the quarterback. Cooper is going to have to get down, work on that blocking, just chop him, take him right down. Hey, look at that. Oh. Columbia, they've lost 40 in a row and they're leading. Could they win? I'm not going to say anything. I might be a jinx. <laughs> Third down, 27. A delay to snow. He's got some running room, and he fumbled. Michigan after it. And they've got it. That is the only jinx in Snow's armor is he's been fumbling the football. We mentioned it before. Against Iowa last week when they came back in a tremendous comeback to win the ball game, it was after Carlos Snow had fumbled the football. It's been something he's tried to work on and concentrate all day. We watch him running the football. Number 92 is Keith Cooper. He makes a hit, pops the ball loose, nothing but blue jerseys around, a couple of misses, and finally, someone, I think it was Doug Mallory, number eight, who got back up and made that recovery. They have the ball. Let's go to Steve Alvarez. Gary, I'm with John Woods, the director of the Ohio State University Marching Band. It was an emotional moment earlier this week when your band members showed up at Earl Bruce's house. Did they come to you about that? Uh, yes, uh, this is somewhat of a tradition with the marching band. They like to honor uh, people of this fashion. They've done this with past directors who have retired and left, and they do this on their own. Of course, they called and said, uh, we'd sure like to do this for Coach, and uh, I thought it was a great idea, and so did they. And they're a class bunch of people. They really are. I think Earl Bruce and his wife thought it was a great idea, too. Let me ask you, your, your band has to sit on the field because this place is so packed, but in a way, it's nice because you all get to run down here and play for your uh, folks who have traveled from Ohio for the game. Right, we really have our people sitting in two various sections of the stadium, so we've now split the band into two parts so we can uh, take care of both groups. Well, this, band, this football team has given you something to, to play about. Thank you very much, John. Garrett. All right, Taylor's come back in at quarterback for Michigan after they carried for two yards. Taylor scrambling, and he picks up a first down for Michigan to the 30. So Taylor comes back in. Brown has not been as effective since he was hurt early in the game, and now Boshan Beckler has gone back to Taylor, hoping to get his offense back on track. That's absolutely correct. I don't know whether it's the injury. I don't know whether it's just slowed down just a bit. He just feels a little bit off. But Brown's now on the sideline watching his ball game. Taylor running that option might just be 
different enough in his style to make it happen here in the second half. He's been effective since he's been in there. This time, he'll give off to Webb. Webb trying to get wide. Picks up four before he slammed out of bounds at the 25-yard line. 20 to 13, Ohio State with the lead. 2.13 to go, third quarter. Second down and four coming up. Let's take a look at Spillman as Webb is moving along the sideline. You see Spillman playing it off. Then once they get to the sideline, Webb is just wide open, and Spillman makes a good pop, almost knocks the ball away. Boy, did he pop him. You talk about being in a position to hit somebody. <laughs> Webb said, here's my chest. Take your best shot, oh. and Spillman did. He did. On a second down and four, Leroy Ford now in at fullback. Number 33, the freshman out of New Orleans, has the first down for Michigan. So Michigan now trying to tie this game up. Earlier they were on the move, only to fumble. Demetrius Brown fumbling, and right now Brown on the sideline watching as his backup Taylor will try to get in the end zone. This time, the wishbone. To the 19-yard line, Punch, Jared Punch to the 10. A gain of nine. It'll be second down a yard. This is what they were doing at the start of the football game. What they were doing at the start of the football game, what they did effectively against Minnesota when we covered them in that ball game. They trailed most of the ball game in the third quarter. They just kept coming back, coming back, and finally took over. So even though they're only they're down by seven points here, there's a minute and 30 in the third period. Michigan team will just consistently come at you until they get you where they want you. These guys have been going after each other since 1897. Second down, a yard to go. This time it's Horde. Horde inside the five, diving touchdown. great deal he only had 17 carries for 87 yards and one touchdown coming into this ball game but you couldn't tell it by that run his first start was against Minnesota he had 77 yards in that game that's his second touchdown of the year Gillette point after is good and we're all even at 20 so the point after miss by France Obviously, giving Michigan a chance to come back in and tie this one up with 1.14 to go in the third quarter of play. As we take another look at this touchdown run, keep in mind, what set up this touchdown run was a turnover by Ohio State after several penalties had backed them up, and then substitution change at quarterback where Taylor comes in for Demetrius Brown, running the option effectively, finally handing off to Horde for a great touchdown run. The first turnover of the game by Ohio State and Michigan taking advantage of it. It's all even and we still have 16 minutes 14 seconds left to play. Yes we should be surprised Lynn. You look at this game people said hey there's nothing really at stake. It's just Ohio State Michigan that's what's at stake. And whenever you have the great rivalries whether it's Yale Harvard Michigan Ohio State. USC UCLA very often it's why the coaches say throw away all those stats and everything it's an emotional contest it's history it's tradition it's a game that if you win you walk away with your football history intact because you say you beat the team you were supposed to beat. see the guy that went out on the field with Sukowitz that was Alex Agassi he's a volunteer assistant coach a great football player and an outstanding coach for many years and assisting Bo Schembechler. Looking ahead now to Saturday, which is tonight, of course. We hope you'll spend it with us, as we'll have the man with two identities, Sable at 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock Central. Hey. Then Pat Morita goes hey, undercover hey. to stop a band of thieves who steal from the rich on O'Hara. And James Brolin day? discovers a <laughs> secret from his past. Hotel, tonight after Sable and O'Hara on I mean, ABC. Good. Football, football. I love this game of football. <laughs> You uh, 
You know what? I think what this has done to you, this has brought back that Pittsburgh mentality. You love this cold now. What? You've forgotten about your California influence, and you're now back into that black and blue division. Well, I tell you, I love these crisp days. It's blue skies. You know, we haven't had a football game all year long that we've done that hasn't had great weather. And this is great weather. Blue skies, it's a bit crisp out there. The air is colder, but you never get tired in a day like this. You just find that oxygen in the air, and you take it in in the deep, deep breath into those lungs, fill them up with the cold oh, air. Oh, come on now. Yeah, you come gotta on. love it. I'll tell you one thing you told me that I should say. What's that? You told me one reason one motivation that you caught the football so well with Pittsburgh was you knew if you dropped a pass it would stop the clock and would extend your long cold day. Hey, Mrs. Swan didn't raise any dummies. <laughs> I don't know what the delay is here. Evidently we have a man shaken up and uh, I don't think it's a player. There's somebody having difficulty in the stand. So that's the reason the delay and we'll try to kick it off now. We'll try to figure that out and Steve will be down there and update us on what is going on, but it does not involve, I don't think, the Ohio State team, even though that's their sideline. Sukowitz now will kick it off. A minute 14 to go, third quarter. Now, wait a minute. Official's going to confer again. I think they're going to come over and explain to Bo Schenbeckler why the delay. Well, there's a lot of excitement here, but we don't need that kind of excitement. I tell you, Sukowitz, standing out there without a shoe or sock on, I would think he'd want to get this one kicked off pretty quick, don't you? Uh, either that or get a foot warmer on or something. Oh, man. I, I just can't imagine walking around and then kicking a football on this cold day. Well, his foot's frozen. That's why he won't feel a thing. <laughs> They're also holding the delay. Who Whatever the problem was on that far side. They're taking them out they're now taking on, them out the cart. on the cart. And they have to come onto the field just a bit to get the cart through the tunnel. They're into the tunnel now, so we should have the kickoff in just a moment. So we continue this rivalry. For the first time, Ohio State will not be going to a bowl game for the first time since 1981. Michigan will continue on January 2nd. They'll play the runner-up in the Southeastern Conference in Tampa on the Hall of Fame Bowl. There's a kick. It's deflected short, and Michigan's got it. Now, wait a minute. Ohio State may have it. Let's don't, let's don't try to guess. Everybody's in there. It sure looked like Michigan, a Michigan player got the football. Boy, they're having a tough time sorting it out, aren't they? Well, that's because the players don't want to come out of the pile. The players are down there fighting for the football. If the officials had not seen or have not seen who recovered the football, then they'll go under there and they'll scrap and they'll fight and they'll try to pull away from each other. Michigan's got it. I don't know if this was an onside kick attempt. I think he just slipped. I watch him in practice. This does not look like one of the onside kicks they practice. You see the ball squirting loose. And right there, Sean LaFontaine, number 34, a defensive back, comes up with the recovery. I agree with you. I don't think it was planned that way. I think he kicked it poorly. His foot probably got so cold, he couldn't kick it that, effectively. That might have been it. In our first Super Bowl, Super Bowl IX, against the Vikings in New Orleans, Roy Jarella slipped. And because they weren't expecting it, we were able to recover it and went on to win that ball game. Taylor at the controls again for Michigan. From the 45, it's all even at 20 as we go to the last minute of the third quarter. Jamie Morris. Morris now picking up a couple of yards, getting very close to that record. He now is 127 yards, three short. Let's look at it again, see if this was premeditated or just a mistake. Well, let's see where he strikes the football. He comes up. He's pretty close to that football. I think he just got beyond it. He got beyond it. His body was in front of it, kicked it high, and uh, I, I just think he missed it. It's awfully early to be trying onside kicks. Oh, too early. Anyway, on that last play, Morris picked up a yard. It'll be second down nine. 
Taylor on the option. Pitches back to Jamie. Jamie, boy, he just can't get to that record. He's had to work one yard at a time the last four to five carries. That time he may have picked up a half yard, and that's all. And that's such a big contrast. You see, he only needs three more yards. That's such a big contrast to the first half where he came out and he was just giving that yardage in big chunks. I don't know if he's aware he's that close, and I'm sure Ohio State isn't. It's going to bring up third down, still nine yards to go. And now coming back in is Demetrius Brown, a quarterback. You're going to have to keep close tabs on this. They keep changing quarterbacks. It's Brown this time, the left-hander. And he's going to be buried. He's thrown for a loss back at the 49 of Michigan. That show Walter again, who played a very strong game. And right under that pile with him is number 55, Ray Holloman. They're almost going to a specialist quarterback right now. They got Taylor running the option and Brown to throw the ball. They certainly do. You see him faking the play here, the, the Jamie Morris. And he's looking way downfield, but there's no one there. And so we've come to the end of the third quarter. It's all even at 20. We'll return with more of ABC's College Football after this message and a word from our local stations. Earl Bruce in his final game for Ohio State. He finds himself tied up with Michigan as we began the fourth quarter. Michigan to get rid of the football. Monty Robbins to punt. Ross is back. Big rush. They look closely. There's no flag. There's some contact made with Robbins, and it precipitated a very poor punt. Let's see where they're going to move it out. They're going to be at the 34, so Ohio State will get very good field position. We've had a lot of mistakes. Michigan with three, Ohio State with one, and Bo knew they would be big in this game. Well, I think uh, basically, as it has been uh, traditionally, the mistakes will be the key. Um, you can't turn the ball over. You can't throw the interceptions. Can't have a lot of penalties at the wrong time. You got to play good, crisp football and not make a lot of mistakes. And uh, it'll be close. Some little thing's going to decide it. Um, last year, we had the game uh, under control, running out the clock, fumbled the ball. Uh, they got an opportunity to go down and kick a field goal. Fortunately, missed it. Um, there are two sets of circumstances there. One, we could have lost the game with a fumble. Second, they lost it because they missed a field goal. He may be a prophet. We almost had another costly mistake. Snow able to fall on the football. He did lose a yard on the play and shaken up as John Herman for Michigan, their defensive tackle. We'll take a look at it. There's a pitch. He gets a toss right there, and he just doesn't grab it and hang on to it. Don't you think maybe he's a little psyched out right now? He had early this year three fumbles. He was benched. Now he's coughed it up a couple of times today. Very often, he'll just start working on you, and it stays too much a part of your mind. That's John Herman coming off the field now. He started this ball game as a defensive end. And if it's affecting your thinking, your concentration, it eventually will happen because it's too much on your mind. Making bad thoughts. So Herman comes off the football field. Dave Folkersma has checked into the game. Second down, 12. Tupa with time. Over the middle, Snow dropped it again. And as we speak, you can see he really now is struggling. Boy, it's tough. You get those kind of dips, depressions in your game. I know they gave him a football this year, a pink football with a handle to carry around in classes to make him think about all the turnovers. And now he's thinking too much about it. There you take a look at the stats. You see Michigan, 366 yards. But the big difference is the turnovers right there because Ohio State has taken advantage of most of those turnovers and put points on the scoreboard. The mistakes the bow just addressed a moment ago. Snow's coming out now, and they're putting their arm around Snow, trying to encourage him, get him back into this game. And now we're going to have to have a timeout. He came out of the game, and possibly no one came in to replace him. Anyway, Ohio State calls for a timeout. They have two remaining. Earl Bruce try to bolster the freshman Snow and continue this drive. It's all even. That may be the longest nine minutes in history for Columbia. <laughs> oh, I tell you, if I wasn't in the ball game as a player for that team, I'd be on the sideline praying. It's 20 all. 
as we have a third and 12 for Ohio State they had to ask for a timeout both teams now have two timeouts remaining the Buckeyes have the ball at their own 32 yard line nobody's left have they not a single person over 100,000 for the 79th consecutive time I don't know what we're delayed for now they're over discussing something with Gary Blackney the defensive coordinator of Ohio State Big no, 10 in attendance has just been phenomenal every year and today they pass the 4 million mark for the third consecutive year in attendance. And phenomenal. speaking of attendance there's not a ticket to be had out there for that one coming up next UCLA and USC. Here we go third and 12 now for Tupa and company from their own 32. Out of time Ross can't get it. Great effort, but he can't do it. Out of bounds, David Key, number 26, a freshman who is from Columbus, playing for Michigan, over defending on the play. Boy, take a look at Mark Messner again. He's putting pressure. They're zoning, but this time they zone back away to the other side. And Messner has just got one-on-one -on -one blocking right there with Tim Moxley, number 74, taking him on. Boy, he and just wears you out, doesn't he? And he just, just held him out. Just held Messner out long enough to get that ball away. So Tupa trying to keep the hands warm. We'll go back to punt inside the 20. Coltazar back. Remember he had one earlier day of 63 yards called back. Taking a lot of time. He hit a beauty. Coltazar at the 23 and he was hit instantaneously and a penalty flag. That may be interference. Andy Gerd, number 49, who's a freshman, was there almost as quickly as a football and they say he got there too quickly. And Gerd looks like he's shaking up on the play. Now Gerd had a minor concussion versus Iowa last week. However I hate to call any concussion minor. Didn't know if he was going to play. Right here you see he comes in and he makes contact just as the ball comes in. Well that's awfully close isn't it. Yeah that is close. Catch interference. Against the defense, five yard penalty, first down. I tell you what happened there is you have to give him room. I don't think he made contact before the ball was there, but you can't get that close before the ball is caught. You have to give him room to make the catch. He, <laughs> if he gave him room, it was only a quarter of an inch. Colazar, it's amazing he was able to get up after that when he took a real shot. Well, that's a great example of concentration under any circumstances. Anyway, they have it first down at the 28. Taylor is the quarterback again. They keep continuing to alternate at that spot. Callaway goes in motion. Taylor to Morris. Now this may do it. Morris trying to get the record. Comes across the 30 to the 31. Going to bring up a second down and eight yards to go. And that now is officially 130 yards. With that carry, he has set the Michigan single season rushing mark. And that is the last rushing record that that 5'7 senior had to conquer. He set every other rushing record, single season, first time to go over 1,000 yards three times in a row. He's done it all. And this time, they are able to move it out to the 35. That's Jared Bunch, the fullback. They'll still be four yards short of the first down and bring up a third down. Let's go to Steve. Thank you, Gary. I don't know why, but for some reason, a lot of the fans here in the stadium have been throwing marshmallows on the field. I don't know. When it's cold, what do you do with marshmallows? You roast them. That's what you do. Guys, get those dirty socks out of the way, will you? Let's roast some marshmallows. Hey, Gary and Lynn, you want me to send you one or two? <laughs> yeah, show us what they look like. Oh, look. Oh, yeah, see? Yeah, you made fun <laughs> of me until you work. saw how nice they are, huh? Yeah, well, send That's me up right. a couple. Well, we'll rally around the campfire, guys. We got roasted marshmallows. You guys want one? No. Yeah, see? Right there they go. They're gone. Turned down at three. <laughs> Here's Taylor rolling around. Kumaro's got him, and he's not going to get the first down. Eric Kumaro. The 6'6 senior coming from the backside out of River Forest, Illinois. That's a big play. And he stops him. They needed three yards and they only got one, and it's fourth down. Well, this game is taking on a quite a different complexion. First, it was Michigan rolling up 13 points. We thought they were going to run away with the ball game. One turnover. Ohio State comes back. Then they take the lead. Michigan comes back and ties it. Now they're just in the stalemate, battling back and forth. 
So typical of Big Ten football as Robbins now trying to give him good field position. Doesn't kick that exceptionally well. Takes a bounce, however, and Michigan's going to get a break. It goes inside the 15 to the 13 yard line. So Ohio State will start deep at their own end of the field. 12 minutes, three seconds to go. The 84th meeting, and we're all even. Well, Jim, it's good to know that it's colder somewhere. 20 below the chill factor. I think it was eight below here at the start of the day. Ah, uh, wonderful weather, wonderful weather. Anyway, we have a hot football game. For the 14 now, Ohio State has it first down. Tupa rolling out. He's going to have to run it, and at the last minute, ducks it up the field to the 23-yard line. Picks up eight yards. Bobby Abrams over to make the stop. Abrams, an ex-defensive back, very good speed, and what they really like about him, he's six foot four, just a sophomore out of Dayton, I should say Detroit. At the 23, it'll be second down, a yard to go. And this is the kind of ball game that Bobby Abrams should be should be a standout in because he's had such great experience as a pass defender. He should be covering that flat extremely well, negating some of the receivers that come out of the backfield and running the short routes. So they pick up nine on that one. Second and a yard to go. Going for the first down, straight ahead, protecting the football to snow and hanging on to it. He got the first down out to the 25-yard line. He had both arms wrapped around at that time. Well, his coach on the sideline gave him a long talk to uh, to just get his confidence back, try and keep his head back, get, it, get his head back into this ball game. Earl Bruce, oblivious to the cold, realizing that he's getting an outstanding performance from a team that's lost three in a row. From the 25 now, first down. 11.04 left to go in this game. Tupa, pressure coming, steps out of it, takes off to the 30, and Tupa fumbles it, but I think it'll be blown dead. It'll be Ohio State's ball at the 33. But again, Tupa, kind of a new page to his offensive playbook. That's the scramble. He has scrambled very effectively today. Take a look at the scramble again. He's not wasting any time. Look at the blocking. You get three people rushing from one side. You get Messner in there. You get number 88, Brent White, who comes in there. And Tupa just takes it to the hole on the other side and runs it down the field. Almost enough for the first down. Keith Cooper making the stop. Second down, two. So in the last two plays, they picked up nine and eight yards on first down. And that really helped your play calling. Tupa this time. Pitches to Snow. Snow has the first down. Knocked down as he comes across the 35-yard line. So Snow, very, very cognizant of what he's been having problems with, and that's hanging on, doing so on the last two carries, and Ohio State continues their drive. Most backs, when they run a play like that, they know they have to get just a few yards for the first down. They would rather take that ball deep, run along, find an alley, then just turn it up and give it that charge straight forward. That time, Snow had to skate laterally all the way down. He picked up that yard at a, that yardage at an angle, not moving directly forward. First down now from the 36. Tupa back on first down. Pressure coming from T.J. Osmond. Throws it to Cooper, the big fullback, out to the 42-43. Again, an excellent receiver coming out of that backfield. Gain of seven. This reminder, near the conclusion of the day, we will continue a 17-year tradition. That's selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each of the teams. And Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship in each player's name to each school to further assist qualified students in the pursuit of excellence in all chosen fields. Second down, four now for the Buckeyes. Tupa in the pocket. On target, the catch is made. And that is Jeff Ellis, the freshman, the son of Jimmy Ellis, the former heavyweight boxing champion out of Louisville, Kentucky. First down. And Ellis was a freshman playing at tight end. And he's got the kind of speed that some wide receivers have. He's also a pretty good blocker. So when he lines up, comes off that line of scrimmage, he comes at you, you have to give him a little bit of a concussion, a cushion, and respect him. They think he's going to be a great tight end. That wasn't an easy catch to make there. No, low, hard. First down, setting it up at the 49 of OSU. 5, 8.53 left to go in this fourth quarter. There's Snow. 
No, you can see they're trying to strip the ball. That was Ward Manuel who eventually dragged him down. He is a darting type guy. An exciting player. Boy, in this game, there's 30 seconds left. The Fighting Irish scored. They went for two and missed it. Well, Lou Holtz is not the kind of man who's just going to sit back and just play for a tie. You'll be seeing Penn State here on ABC coming up on January 1st. Also just been told that Notre Dame has never won at Penn State. Well, that's a tough place to play. <laughs> Have you ever been there? I've, I've never been there. Never played there. Uh -huh. Very tough. Might be because they got a pretty good coach there. Second down five. Back to throw Tupa again. And the catch is made by Workman. And that'll be another first down. And they're just methodically, relentlessly marching the football. Well, I don't think that Earl Bruce really wants him to score that fast. I mean, he'll take a score any time, any play, any way he can get it. But ideally, I think he would just like to drive down the field, maybe try and wear out the defense to a degree, put the points on the scoreboard, then hope his offense or his defense coming on the field can once again stop Michigan. Remember, this drive started at the 14 at the 12.03 marker, 7.51 left in this game. On a first down, Snow gets maybe a yard, and that's all. So this is impressive. Very impressive. Going back to Snow fumbling the football. They said one of the reasons why he was having a problem hanging on to it is every time he came to the line, he was always trying to switch the ball right hand to left hand to get the proper arm out to straight arm and fend off a tackler. At some point in time, you have to realize you can't always have the ball on the right side. You have to protect it. 7.20 left. Ohio State now has it. Second and nine, the line of scrimmage, the 37 of Michigan. It's 20 all. Tupa rolling out after the play action. Throws. Ross falls down. Abrams is there with him. Incomplete. And we have a man shaken up for Ohio State back at the 45-yard line. And that is the quarterback, Tupa. Mark Messner was coming around the outside. On the, on the play, someone just got a piece of Messner and just stopped him for a second. Then he came around, and just as he released the football, I saw him coming in from behind. We'll take a look. We have him isolated. And watch. There's just a little piece. Not much of a block there by Matlock. And then, boom, he's hit. And sandwiched, ooh, between Billy Harris and Mark Messner. Almost a delayed after effect, aftershock. Well, we'll be back. We'll update the status of Tupa. We're going to take a break. The Los Angeles Rams, rejuvenated by Charles White. The Washington Redskins, they lead the NFC East. They meet on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Well, Tupa's on the sideline. He has to come out. Greg Fry will replace him, a red shirt freshman. Let's go back and watch Messner's hit on Tom Tupa. Now, there's some debate as, as to whether it's a late hit. 56, Billy Harris is tackling Tupa. Then Messner is blocked by Bill Matlock back. I think his arms are down. I don't think he was showing aggression at the quarterback. It's a twisted knee, but Tupa will be back. This is the 11th play of this drive now. Third and nine, and this is Fry, the man we just mentioned. He's played very little. Comes throwing. Workman wide open. Out of bounds. First down. 18-yard line. That is a great play. Take into consideration. Fry. That's at the final of that ball game. Fry sitting on the bench. No time to warm up. He comes into the ball game. He takes a snap from the center. He hasn't taken a snap from all day long. Then it's a pass, and he throws a perfect pass to Workman across the field. That is not easy to do in the cold weather on top of all of that. You mean I left something out? <laughs> <laughs> Tupa comes back in, by the way. Fry does the job. Scrambling around. Messner giving chase. Tupa throws. Did he catch it inbounds? Yes. Ross did. It is a completion. You talk about having balance and the presence of mind to where that sideline is. Ross did all of that and then some. He certainly did. Also, Tupa, he rolls out. And once again, you will see his old nemesis, number 60, Mark Messner right there. Now, if Messner's on your tail, you know you better hurry up and throw the football. He gets a receiver on the flat, throws it out over the outstretched arms of Bobby Abrams from the 24, who had excellent position out in the flat. Well, as you know, they lost Chris Carter at the start of the year. That's a Chris Carter-type catch. 
Third down, still four yards to go. Workman comes in motion to the near side. Tupa giving to Snow. Snow is going to be short of the first down. It's going to be fourth down. He needed to get to about the eight. Instead, he's just inside the 10. Fourth down for Ohio State. Kick it. Kick that field goal. So Franz will come in. Franz has had a strong leg. He's kicked one as long as 51 yards. He is 9 of 16 for the season. And this is going to be a 26-yard attempt. Scott Powell to hold. Franz's kick is up. It's good. Well, Lynn, you said it very well. Earl liked to score with not a lot of time left. There's still a lot of time left in this football game. Five minutes, 18 seconds to go. Franz giving the Buckeyes the advantage from 26 yards out. Well, what a game we have here, and what a game we have to follow, UCLA and USC. You don't get your fill of football today. 5.18 to go. Matt Franz, a senior out of Cincinnati, who had earlier missed a point after, hits a 26-yard field goal. There he is, and that's the difference in the game right now. 5.18 left to go, 23-20, the Buckeyes. He doesn't even run at this one. He kicks it almost from a standing position off to Colazar. Colazar to the 30, 35. He's to the 38-yard line. Now let's see if they send Taylor or Brown in at quarterback. As you know, they've been filtering them back and forth, almost like Taylor for the run and Brown for the pass. Well, 5:13 left. It's up to Bo Schimbeckel to make a decision. He certainly can move down the field either way. It's going to be Brown. Demetrius Brown, who earlier was knocked out of this game, came back. So he'll take over, and they'll start from their own 38-yard line. Keep in mind, he's a left-handed passer. Broken thumb on his left hand, hand dislocated thumb on his right hand. Last week, Michigan pulled it out in the waning seconds. Last week, Ohio State lost at the gun. Let's we'll see what happens here with 5-12 to go. Here is Morris. Morris. Across the 40 to the 42 yard line, a gain of three. Already he has gone over 130 yards, setting that single season rushing mark. It was held by Rob Lytle and set in 1976, 1,467 yards. Illegal motion, though, that's going to negate the run. So with 503, Chris Spielman looks to the far side, and Earl Bruce says, Take it, take the penalty. Yes, this is not the time for Michigan to start racking up penalty yards. We have an illegal shift on the offense. First down. So they'll step off the five yards. Monday night, sure to be with us. Standing football game coming your way. The Redskins with Doug Williams now running the show. Charles White and the Rams. White's the new Eric Dickerson in the L.A. area. Oh, yes, he is running extremely well. You know, you talk about Doug Williams. Early in the year, Jay Schroeder went down. Williams came in and won the ball game for him. And there was a deal or some speculation that the Raiders in Los Angeles were trying to trade for Williams. When he was injured, Washington said no deal. After the penalty, Michael Taylor comes in at quarterback, and they're going to run the reverse. Here's Colazar. He's got a blocker, Chester, ahead of him. And Colazar knocked out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Well, there's no season remaining to save all your tricky plays for. That's and they're right. pulling out all the stops now. Well, they're, they're pulling out all the stops now. This is great. It's a little deviation there. It looks like it's going back to Webb. Colazar just takes it in the air. But Dumas and Brown are there and do an excellent job. Brown, the safety number 27 there, does an excellent job holding position, knocking him out of bounds. They pick up yards in the play, but not big yards. They pick up 10 yards. They needed 15, so they're five short. Second down, five. Colazar split to the top of the field. Dropped the wishbone. Fullback, Leroy Horde. 
first down Michigan they've been very effective out of the wishbone today running straight at Ohio State and Horde at six foot 215 pounds he was their best fullback in the spring but he got in that proverbial Bo Beckler doghouse had to battle his way back due to some academics and now is playing very solid football and a tremendous run for a touchdown first down now at the 47 of Ohio State from the wishbone again and this time it's fumbled I think Taylor had it no he lost it it's loose at the 48 Ohio State has it that is the fourth turnover by Michigan Eric Camaro came up with it the turnovers are big and have been important plays this could be the biggest because it stops the drive you see the handoff there going to number three Leroy Horde it looked like Demetrius Brown left his hand in there for a long time maybe he grabbed the ball and the hand at the same time when he pulled it out the ball came loose and Eric Kumaro number 14 the senior outside linebacker picks it up you wonder if changing the quarterbacks can maybe mess the timing up a little bit there's a stop on Workman. Now Workman has gone back to tailback. Workman to carry it on that particular play. He may have gotten, well, he lost the yard. It'll bring up second down, 11 yards to go. Ross now comes back in at a wide receiver spot. Inside, four minutes to go. Both teams have two timeouts remaining. Snow checks out of the ball game. So they're going to go to a full house tee this time. Second down, 11. Now Workman and Ross jump out to the top of the field. Tupa will roll that way. Messner held up. Flag on the play. Messner makes the stop, and I'll bet you any amount of money that flag is on a holding call as Messner looked like they almost tackled him when he came through. They just cannot keep Messner out of there. It's really tough. It's what it is. Messner got there, made the tackle despite the penalty. See the scoring there by Corden in this ball game. Messner is so quick coming off that line. They had two tight ends in that ball game, and even the tight ends aren't quick enough to stop them. They've got to reach and grab them. Evan Hole on the offense, still second down. Very costly penalty. All the way back to the 40-yard line. They got a long ways to go. 20 yards now for the first down. Line of scrimmage just across the 40, and it's second down. Watch. The defense for Michigan as they are going to try and strip the football make the big hits one thing they have to be concerned about is making a late hit and getting called for the penalty in their efforts Billy Harrison knows on top of Eulen Hake the center who will snap it to Tupa in motion goes Workman Tupa back on second and 20 screen out to Cooper the fullback Cooper to the 50 and Cooper gets it within 10 yards of a first down so he picked up half of it as he's to the 49-yard line of Michigan. That's the score we mentioned earlier. Notre Dame going for two, failing to do so, to connect on it, and dropping to their second loss of the year. Line of scrimmage now, the 48 and a half. Third down, still 10 yards to go. Workman in motion to the near side. Tupa delay handoff. Snow has got some running room. First down. He's to the 30. 25. 20. And the freshman possibly his biggest run of the season. To the 18. First down. OSU. Great, great, great run as they take advantage of the rush. They take the pass. A little draw. All the action was going to his left, but the play was designed to go to the right. And when he gets to the outside, there's no one there. It's like an invisible wall blocking off the Michigan defenders. He has 69 yards on 20 carries. That was a 30-yard rump to the 18-yard line. 2-19 left in the game. Ohio State by three. Trying to put a clincher in to Cooper. Cooper runs over. 
J.J. Grant stays on his feet and advances to the 10. And each time he gets the ball, you can hear the fans yell, Coop, Coop, and Cooper's played a strong game. Played a strong game. He's had some tough yardage. We'll see him here. He'll take the ball. Grant's in perfect position. He just takes him on, lowers his shoulders, doesn't allow him to get his arms locked around his body, and then drives forward where he meets Anthony Mitchell, number 20. Mitchell made the stop just short of the 10. Second down, two. They're in no hurry. Time now, 140 and moving. The key here is to just get another first down. Cooper, they've got that. It's Cooper again. And Cooper, one of the seniors, playing his final game for Ohio State. Gets the first and goal to the five. Boy, he's playing like he's inspired. Look at it. Playing extremely well. Michigan has two timeouts. Ohio State has two timeouts. Minute 32, 31, and counting down. Can you imagine what this man is thinking right now? I don't think I'm allowed to say. He said he'll have something to say after this game. And I imagine there'll be some people on hand to hear it. First and goal now from the five. Tupa trying to sneak it forward. That play didn't develop very well and a very dangerous play, but they able to hang on, pick up a yard. Looks like the snap might have been a little messed up, but didn't develop well at all. And now we're going to have a timeout call by Michigan. They'll have one timeout remaining. A minute eight left. A minute eight left in this guy's coaching career in Columbus. I don't know. Would you? Michigan using their second timeout. They have one left with 108 to go. Ohio State, excellent position, a three-point lead, second and goal from the three. At this point, I think they got one left. They're not going to do anything fancy. Make sure they don't turn the football over. If Michigan wants to use their last timeout, fine, use it. They can at least kick a field goal here and force Michigan to have to score a touchdown. Here's Tupa on the option. He'll cut it up, fight for the goal line. He's just a yard short, and it comes to a third and goal. Clock now with a minute. Wind. Mark Mester was there again. You see the time. Shim Beckler wants to use his last time out, but they're having a tough time getting the attention of the Michigan players. He finally does, but they lost six or seven valuable seconds. 53 remaining. This ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by the Heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. By Coors Light, the Silver Bullet. There's no slowing down with a Silver Bullet. By the Power Tool People at Black & Decker. And by Mr. Goodrich. No one knows your GM car better than Mr. Goodrich. No one. So Bo, who had hoped to win today and post his 18th season with eight or more wins right now, Gonna have a miracle to pull this one out with 53 seconds left. Third and goal at the one. His team down by three. And Earl Bruce, on the other hand, finishing his career at Ohio State. And what a way to finish it. An outstanding performance by all of his players. So many of his players playing extremely well. Edward Ross with some big catches. Tom Tupa had an outstanding game. Carlos Snow came up with some big runs. George Cooper. Some great running, hard running in this ball game. Ray Holloman on the defensive line. Some great pressure. Mike McCray, number 99, played extremely well. Mike Showalter, 98, putting pressure on people. And William White and Jack Dumas at the corners. David Brown in the secondary all came up with big plays to keep their team on top. Earl Bruce would win the rubber game of this series. They were 4-4. Four and four. He and Jim Becker coming into this one. Trying to take it in, and they did not get it in as Cooper, so it's going to be fourth and goal as they now cannot stop the clock. They've run out of timeouts. I want to thank our statistician George Hill, our spotter Kelly Hayes, for a job well done. It's been a pleasure working with them all season long. As we come to the last 30 seconds of this 84th meeting, hey. this intense rivalry, ending the career at Ohio State for Earl Bruce, but you know what? He's not going to stay unemployed very long. I don't think so. He's an excellent coach. His record shows that. Somebody, some team somewhere is going to have him as a head coach. And I think he'll be successful there, too. 
Tupa giving off again, and they're not going to get in, but it's really academic because with nine seconds, Michigan will get it on the exchange of possession. The clock will be stopped. And we're going to take this opportunity to credit some people who have just done a great job for us today. Our producer, Peter Lasser, our director, Andy Sedaris, Chet Mezrek, our technical director, David Kiviat, our associate director, Mike Cohen and Kent Gordis, our associates to the producer, technical manager, Mike Fisher, and our unit manager, Dennis Zabel. Thank you, guys. It's been fun. Our Chevrolet most viable players of the game, Tom Tupa of Ohio State. Jamie Morris of Michigan, who becomes a single-season rushing leader at Michigan. Tupo the strong performance today, passing and running for the Buckeyes. And a check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet in their names to each school's general scholarship fund. Demetrius Brown will come in. They'll try desperately to pull it out. No timeouts left and nine seconds to go. The pass incomplete. And that still leaves a second to go. Colazar thought he was interfered with. He was hoping he was interfered with. Don't forget now, we're instantly going to switch out to the Los Angeles Coliseum for that battle for the Rose Bowl between UCLA USC immediately after this game. But stay with us. We will a comment from Earl Bruce. And a very interesting comment it'll be after this game is all over. UCLA, USC next. It's been something special. So Michigan, after winning the last two, Ohio State, after losing three in a row, avoiding that fourth in a row as Brown, last gasp effort. McMurtry, who has not made a catch all day. It's over. <laughs> 56-year-old Earl Bruce finishes with his 81st win. He is 57-17 and 17 in Big Ten play, the best record in the Big Ten Conference since 1979. He finishes five and four against Michigan. And we will have a comment later from this man. Coming up in a moment, UCLA, USC, the final here, 23-20 Ohio State. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as a leader in sports television.